I'm going to try not to eat chips too loud. <laughs> you can never eat a bag of chips too loud. So welcome to anyone that's tuned in. Uh, a bag of chips in the the post-apocalypse would be something of a <laughs> You might want to watch out, Mina. We might be chasing after you to get those out of your, your little hands there. So <laughs> welcome to the, any, anyone that's tuning in for the first time particularly. Uh, welcome to a, an actual play of this temper. We're running through a campaign called Home by the Sea, and I'm joined this evening by some awesome people. We have Zero Theory, we have Mina, we have Grumpster Fire, and we have uh, Grumpy Battersby, who's hosting all of this. So can everyone say a collective hello to the audience? Hello. 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 <laughs> oh, feel that energy. Feel that energy. You're like a bunch of smokers. You really are. So I appreciate you all diving in there. Well, look, so um, beautiful. So we are streaming. So I, I'm going to... A little bit of a recap for you guys, but also for anyone that happens to be streaming or happens to be uh, tuning in, I should say. So um, today in the game, it's it's uh, April 15th. So it's 404 days since the first recorded death. Um, this is the third, like the, really the second night or the third day that you've seen in the game. And I kind of want to go over some stuff, like what we're going to be doing this evening. So I am going to be, and I don't know if we're going to be able to stream this now, like just Realize that I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Oh, we can't because we're not in. Let me see if there's a way to do this. Um, I add a sheet screen share. Oh, well, let me see if this works. Hold on one second. All right. So I, I wanted to kind of bring a couple of things up, right? Oh, that's so I know. You, you brought more than a couple of things up. I know, right? Good feelings all around. It reminds me of when I was at college taking way too many mushrooms. So, like, um, <clears throat> I'm going to put this link into the chat, um, into our Monday Night Games chat. This is, uh, by the way, you can all see this, great. You can see this map. Mm -hmm. All right, so so you have access to this, right? And this is just, it's meant to be, it, it's uh, this is interactive, right? I mean, you can see the different uh, markers. If you use this drop down, you'll be able to see, the, I, I'll be adding different places to it. But it's really to add kind of a, a different, or like a, a level of kind of control and realism and like exploration of the place we're in, right? So as you can see, if you're still looking at the screen, like if, uh, if I click on the library, I've been putting notes in there, right? So it says that Lance or Zero found a, a book on basic engine engine mechanics, and you also found a work on converting cars to ethanol, right? So I'm using this map as kind of our play map, right? And again, you, you guys all have access to it as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it, it's while we're going through this and, and making some choices. The, the main reason I just I just had to interject there for just a second Please. was to learn how to make booze. That was the main goal. Yeah. Those other things, those are side effects. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll take them, but the main goal was was uh, pure grain alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like a man who knows what he likes, right? So I'm very, you know, that that, that I, I can't help but admire you for that. And if we can run a car or find some kind of torture device out right. of this experimentation, oh, man, it feels like a fucking win to me, right? Yeah. So, again, you guys all have access to the map. I'm going to stop sharing this part. Um and I'll, I'm going to share again in a little bit, right? But but going back to kind of where we are. So that map is going to be getting updated as we go through the different play sessions, right? And, you know, like different details or things you might remember or whatever. But if you have anything you would want added to that, just put it into the chat or send me a private message and I'll make sure. Ultimately, I want to make this bi-directional so that the players would be able to put stuff on there. And also, so that, like, kind of like with Roll20, we can have like a GM screen, right? So, but we're, I'm a ways away from that at the moment. So if you guys, like, if anything happens or if you want to put anything in there, then j just let me know and I'll add it to it. All right, so back to the plot, right? So um, you guys have started getting to know each other. You've been going to the same docks. You've all been fishing down there. You've seen Sven kind of get in this boat, which is called the Gimp at the moment, until Sven gives me a better name for it. But he's been on his boat, the Gimp, for a while, and you guys have all been seeing each other as you kind of like get together in the – or as you're going fishing in the mornings. Um, there's also been like a, a regular gathering in the evenings in the park that you can see on the map, right? And so – um, there's a guy called Old Tom, and there's another fellow who rides around on his bike scavenging called Mark, and they're there every evening, and more and more people are joining them. So the other night, two strangers turned up, and you showed them kindness, and they stayed in the Bowline Hotel, which, again, is also on the map, with the North Shore. But they, as you probably remember, they kidnapped a young girl and kind of scarped it across the bridge. So 
you were able to catch up with them using Sven's boat, um, and and it turned into a bloody confrontation. But you you rescued the young girl and you got her back to the the town safely. So that evening, while you guys were in the um, in the park, kind of like you know talking to everyone, some some politics started rearing their head. Right, a, a guy called Trent, an older guy said that he wanted to take charge of the group. And his, his credentials were that he'd been a, a judge and a sheriff in Arkansas, and he believed that gave him the authority to take over the group and provide safety. There was another com a competing voice, a guy called Mitchell, that turned out to be a Nike executive, and he said, like, you know, he didn't think that forcing people to do what Trent wanted them to do was the right way to go. And moreover, like, you know, collectively, you've all seen, like, three, four, five hundred 500 people in the town. Right. So, the, you know, the 30 people or so that were in the park, like it didn't seem right that they'd be able to make the decision for everybody. And it could just end up going badly if a couple of people decide to appoint themselves bosses. So what was agreed on was that, for you know, five days from now, people would come back together and there'd essentially be an election. So that's kind of our summary of we. Oh, and, and the session ended with the faint sound of a plane flying overhead, but it was too dark, so you couldn't actually see anything, but it sounded pretty clearly like it was a plane flying overhead. So any questions on the recap or any, any comments, anything, anything before we move on? No, nope. good to go. Whereabouts was the plane flying overhead? Like what direction? Uh, kind, of, kind of hard to tell, right? Um, and in fact, we're in roll 20, so let me put us on a map where you could make a skill check. <clears throat> because while we still have perception, if you guys want to make a perception check and see if you can figure out where that noise was coming from, we can do that. Oh, Sven, very nice. Probably oh, very nice. Very very nice. <laughs> I notice things. <laughs> oh, Lance, you do notice things, right? The things like the sounds up in the sky. So if you had to take a guess, and again, like, uh, you know, if you and Maria are close enough to each other, thank you, Matt. I was just about to send you a message to ask you to change screens. Thank you. I think if you and Maria um, are close enough in this area that you're talking together, and let's just see if you are, I, I think you could probably double up on your efforts, right? But it, it, it sounds like, you know, it really does sound like it was coming from the southwest, right? If you had to make a guess, it was coming from the south, potentially southwest. That's what it felt like to you, Maria, and then heading north. That help? Okay. Yeah, so the bridge that we rescued the girl from heading over town. Okay. Possibly. And so um, make, make a, um, a general knowledge or a local check. everybody you know it would really i think just be um uh sven and maria because they're the only okay. ones that have failed the perception check so let's have you both make a, a local check okay local I'm trying to find that um, be under knowledge on your uh character sheet character yeah, oh, i'm so sorry yeah on your character screen let me let me know if you want me to share screen i can show you how to get to it um If you click your journal, and think, it'll have your name in there, that'll bring up your character sheet. Okay, I got it. Uh, knowledge. Um, yes, please. Local knowledge. Okay. Yes, please. Press that, and then press that. Did I do it? You did. Woo! So for all of you, it's, it's really no surprise that this area is so well known to you. But down here, there's uh, the, the if you look on the maps, there's the Astoria Regional Airport, right? So you can't say for sure if it was coming from there, but that does seem like a fairly good bet. You know what I mean? Like it's it's in the area. <clears throat> excuse me. It's it's in the area. It's uh, it's local, and you know it, it it is named after the town you're living in, right? So that's kind of why you all are aware of it. So that's a good bet as to where it came from, but not absolutely a certainty. And I'm guessing this is the first time we've heard a plane in quite some time. Yeah, a hundred percent, right? And it kind of takes you all a little bit by surprise, right? I mean, more, more than a little bit by surprise. It's, it's it's kind of jarring and startling, right? You guys have just started talking to each other, and again, it's really you know 
two, three months since the apex, right? It's 400 days since this all started, but it's really only been like, uh, you know, the last month or so that you guys have even started kind of nodding at each other and talking to each other. And, you know, Sven, you've been wondering how you're going to keep your boat filled with diesel because there's precious little, little bit left of the dock, right? And so the fact that you hear another vehicle, right, and, and the fact it's a plane, it's super jarring in this way. All right. Well, I'm going to probably talk to the, um, oh, the retired sheriff guy. I can't think of his name now, even though he just said it. Um, Trent? Yeah, Trello. I'm going to talk to him and say, hey, maybe uh, maybe that's one of the first things we do tomorrow is go visit the airport. So he kind of, he looks at you and he, he's, he's, he's not rude about it, but he, he you know, he, he, first of all, he says, Wait, so you're the guy that let the strangers stay in the house, right, or stay in the hotel. So, he, you know, he hasn't forgotten that, right? And, he, he, you know, he kind of brings it up to you and makes, makes, makes sure that he knows who he's talking to. Yeah, I kind of uh, let that happen, if you will. He's also <laughs> the guy that uh, rescued them as well, don't forget. Yeah, oh. that too. Good point. It's, it's, so, T, you're, you're kind of standing up for him. Is that is that fair? Yeah. 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 So um, Trent looks at you and says, you know, I, I think we've probably got enough things to do in the town. Uh, if you want to take like a little jaunt down there, like like have at it. But I'm, I'm going to be organizing security. Like win, win, lose or draw this. And he kind of does air quotes, this election that we're having. You know, we still need to make sure that the town is safe. So he's not dismissive of you going there, but he makes it very clear that he thinks this is a waste of his time. That sounds fair. All right, so let me share my screen again with you um, and just go over one more thing. So what, one of the um, – oh, hold on one second. I keep going to share it through Discord and then realizing we're not in Discord. Hold on. <laughs> and it's about to get super trippy for a second. There we go. So one of the things I want to do um, test out is – it is activities, right? And and part of, um, you know, as I've said to you all before, like there's a big part of the game I've developed, which is about community building and blah, blah, blah. So there is a, an overarching plot for the next like four or five sessions, but I do want to test out these rules around community building, right? So um, <clears throat> one of the things that, the, this thing that I have up in front of me at the moment um, is around so daily activities and weekly activities right so you know you've agreed to come back together in five days time to uh to do this kind of like nascent vote right but the reality is that you know th there are longer term goals in this game like farming and recruiting and uh, like apprentices and training and there's a lot of things so so the two systems we'll be testing over the next couple of weeks one is the activity system and the other one is the event system right the activities is what are you going to be doing day to day? And you can forego daily and do it weekly. But the idea is that you kind of lay out, hey, so for the next five days, these are the activities that I would be undertaking, right? And I'm, I'm, you know, if there's something missing from this list, if there's something that should be on it, that's what I would be looking to cover, right? So the idea is that between now and the election is this, just color this in, is this block of time here, right? So I guess the, the question is at a high level, what would you guys be doing for the next four or five days? Are you going to be helping uh, one of these guys canvas and get votes? Lance, you just you found out this, you know, these books for uh, for figuring out alcohol. So it would take you uh, seven days to go through those and train and learn how to do it, right? So you, I'm just kind of curious. Like again, the options are up on the screen here, and if there's something that's like missing, let me know it. But the other thing to consider is you also have to take care of uh, food, right? You didn't fish yesterday. Um, you've got, you know, food in your survival kits, right? But you didn't fish yesterday, so you're going to be, you know, eating two-day-old fish or whatever it is. So you're going to have to figure out, hey, are we going to be farming, foraging? Sorry, zero. Is that for me or for everybody saying we, we haven't fished for two days? For everyone. Okay. So, again, you've got supplies in, your, in your, your character sheet, right? So what have you got there? Great. But, again, more testing this out than anything. So I'm kind of curious. So, again, like the the – 
we don't have to decide now because the, you know the, there's still, still this gathering in the park but i just kind of wanted to lay this out there that this is part of what we're going to be testing over uh today and probably next session as well that makes sense sure yeah beautiful so what are you going to be doing over the next few days what what is your plan maria are you still going to be growing your root vegetables or your bell <laughs> whatever it was well, in, in case somebody comes up and needs my assistance, I, I'll participate if I have to. Hint, hint, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but are we going to let the plane go? So we just heard the plane and that's it? Well, I, I don't know how you chase a plane at night, right? And again, it's so high overhead that it's kind of dark. But it just, uh, there, there's, you know, like Sven said, maybe, maybe it's worth a trip to that airport tomorrow to see what's going yeah. on. I guess somebody made a note of like the general direction it was coming from, like the northwest. And then, you know, we sort of, Mark that out. You know, Maria got a, a wild success. Let me go back to the chat. I'm pretty sure Maria got a wild success, right? And so I would think that, uh, and Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, oh, wait, was it Sven that got it? Sven got the wild success. Yeah, it was if it was coming from the coast or leaving off the coast, that's that's pretty that's pretty telling, maybe. It's likely I, to I go think... in the quickest direction, though, isn't it? Saving gas, you'd assume. You'd assume, but I, so I, you know, again, I think that the the wild success that Sven got, plus kind of like you know the, the fact it was local knowledge, I think that it, it's a fairly good bet that that's where it's from, right? So, Maria, to your point, I don't know if anyone's going to be chasing this evening, but Sven's already suggested the next day, and Trent poo pooed it. You were poo pooed by Trent. Well, can I go talk to Sven real quick about it? Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, buddy. What's um, going on, Maria? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> well, um, so you heard that plane, right? What do you want to do about it? Well, I mean, I didn't get a very good haul on fish yesterday, so I was thinking about fishing on that side of the island so I could uh, do my job and potentially keep an eye out over there for some activity. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted to go check it out or, but if you if you're you do a little bit of both. Okay, I I think I'll be hanging out with you tomorrow then. Could always use another uh, another uh, hand on deck. All right. <laughs> and, okay, that's it. I guess that's it. <laughs> so tomorrow you two are going to go and check out the uh, the airport base, right, and see what's down there. Oh, we're going to go fishing. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna look for food yeah no I I, I I like the subtlety of that well kind of while you're gathered here I mean Mitchell um you know Mitchell kind of wanders over to you and you Lance I'm presuming well maybe not maybe not right but you, you three are kind of together and you seem to be forming not necessarily a power base but uh you know to teach his point you were the ones that got the little girl back you seem to be in front and center in a lot of what's going on so Mitchell comes over and starts talking to you, like, you know, trying to, uh, while Maria and Sven are winding down their conversation, he comes over, says hello to teach initially, but tries to pull Lance and Maria into a conversation. And, and, and he's kind of feeling you out a little bit to see whether or not, you know, you think you're going to fall on the side of uh, uh, essentially a democracy or, you know, like, a, I don't say a dictatorship, but like one person leading rather than a, a yeah. democracy. So Mitchell's just trying to be casual about it, but he's also, you know, he's also not being too subtle about it. So, and, sorry, on, uh, how was how does he lean on that? He, he's he, he opposed. Uh, so again, Trent was the old sheriff, and Mitchell was the Nike executive. So Mitchell is advocating the guy that's come over to you. He's really advocating for uh, more of a democracy, right? And you know, he, he doesn't want to just agree with what this ex sheriff, ex judge says, who said like, "Hey, I'm going to deputize people and I'm going to make sure we keep the town safe." Mitchell thinks that it shouldn't just be one person's decision; it should be like everyone should get a voice in it. So he's very much on the demo, you know, the, the kind of democracy side of things. So he just told us all that out out of the blue. Lizzie, looking. No, he kind of came over. No, that was me answering Zero's question. So, no, he came over and he said, like, kind of an eventful day for you guys. Like, good job getting that, that uh, getting Janice back, right? I know that Rachel's going to be really appreciative, but it kind, of, kind of a crazy day for you guys so far, huh? Yeah, well, we had to put it to the vote. 
boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's some some more kind of like, you know, small talk, but he says like, you know, I don't know which way you guys are leaning, but if you're interested in making sure that we have a, a, a democracy back rather than just like listening to what one guy says, I, I'd appreciate if you'd help me canvas over the next couple of days. So he's kind of asking if you'll, uh, you know, help knock on doors, anyone that you see this fishing, anyone you see this wandering around that, that is a, a citizen of Astoria, can you let them know that there's going to be a vote, like five nights? Like he asks you if you'll, you'll help with that kind of like organization and canvassing to make sure there's enough people there. And he, he's very interested in having his name put forward as well as the kind of the Democrat versus a uh, so a Democratic candidate rather than someone that's just trying to take control. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't respond well to authority, anyways. Hey, comment. So, I'm not gonna do too much door knocking or anything, but uh, I'll just be there. What about Lance and uh, sorry, Teach and uh, Sven? We're a bit busy tomorrow, uh, the yeah, I'm kind of lost in thought about that. So he sees that he's not getting too much success, and he's like, he says, okay, well, thanks, and he, he, he moves on to talk to other people in the crowd, right? Because he's obviously trying to kind of whip up support a little bit. So, you know, the crowd starts to thin out, right? It's getting a little bit later. It's getting a little bit colder. So the evening's coming to an end. So anything you guys want to do, anyone you want to talk to before you uh, you head back to your homes for the evening? Uh, one thing, just ask around if uh, anybody knows where I might find copper tubing, uh, parts I might need for my new distillery thing, like those big copper vats or big tubs or, uh, you know, gauges and all those little doodads and knickknacks that go with it. If you accompany <laughs> me to the, I was going to say, if you accompany me to the library, I can look up what we have in the records for the town. As to who's most oh, likely keep, to have that keep stuff. track of stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, well, well, my character could probably tell you which hardware stores have what you're looking for. That's true. Or if anybody's seen like something like that already built. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> let me share my screen again. Um, I, I, it doesn't really feel like really worthwhile making your role for it, given that Sven got a wild success, right? So if you knew where one thing was, he'd probably know where other things were, right? So this is where you are at the moment. Can you see my screen, by the way? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is where you are at the moment in Astoria. This is where you killed those people. Down here is a, a Home Depot. So, you know, assuming that it hasn't been cleared out already, that really wouldn't be too far for you, right? And um, it would be from the Bowline Hotel. You'd probably be able to walk it in roughly two hours or so, right? Actually, a little bit. I don't know why you'd have to take that. I don't know the area. I don't know why you'd take that detour instead of just going down. But let's say for the sake of the uh, argument, you could probably make it there in, in roughly two hours. If you if you found a bike somewhere, you could probably do it in 30 minutes or so. And if oh, you can well, I mean, power, going that way, I could take them there in the morning, and then you could just meet up and drop the stuff off in the boat. So I was wondering, I didn't know if the boat was going to go that way also. Yeah, I'm kind of going that way. And hopefully the Home Depot has a wheelbarrow. <laughs> you know, I, I suspect you'd be able to get pretty much anything that you want, assuming that it hasn't been wiped out too badly. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all going to depend right. on kind of like, you know, who, who's been there before and what they'd, what they'd been able to find, right? And so... All right, so that, that's going to be for tomorrow's activities. You're going to see what you can find out to, to get that stuff from there. Uh, anything else you'd want to do, anyone else you'd talk to before uh, retiring for the evening? Grains. I need vast amounts of grains. Well, at that point, I'd probably tell you to hit up the brew pubs that are nearby. What pods? The brew pubs. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that might be an idea. Hmm. And if I hear you, I say, you know, my granddad used to do this in his bathtub. <laughs> 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 Nothing fancy needed. <laughs> if we have brew pubs already, won't that be enough to build what we want in the first place and on a bigger scale? I mean, at least to get a start. 
Hey, so let, let's um, – what's uh, – actually, let's do this, John. I'm going to send you the link to uh, the, the Google link for this, right, so that you can find it. Like, I, I, I mean, I can type in brew pubs or whatever, but the, you, you were the one that got the wild success, right? So I think, you know, feel free to Google it and see if there's anything on there. The, the, again, this would be your knowledge is your kind of like, you know, where you've been previously here. I mean, I'll check my character sheet. I think I have a brew pub that I frequent, so uh, or I frequented. Yeah, I did not write it down there though. I wrote it down somewhere. I'll find it. I'm sure. Was it in the story itself? Uh, it was in the when you were asking character questions for background. Oh, I have that written down somewhere. Hold on a second. Um, you know, a story of brewing company Fort George. Um, there's actually a ton of them. So um, make that a scavenging check, but th there's a bunch of them. Let me take this screenshot again, put this in chat. <clears throat> but there's a bunch of them in that area that you, you, you know, will be able to see. In fact, really not very far from where you are at the moment, like in the same area. Let me put this in chat for you. All right. So, so again, like in terms of, I think there's going to be a couple of different scavenging checks in different locations or different areas. All right. All right. So, in terms of, uh, again, like anything you're doing before before morning, before dawn, anyone you're talking to, or is this kind of the end of the evening for you? I think that's it for me. Yeah, that's it for me. Those bell peppers are calling. Peach? Uh, it's good for me. Uh, actually, just have a gander on the non-democracy guy because he was talking about fortifying. <laughs> what What do you mean, have a gander? Like, what, what, what are you looking at? Like, you... you what do you do I don't want to I don't want to suddenly turn up uh, uh, wake up tomorrow and he's already got his um uh he, he's eradicated democracy overnight you know, you know he's, that, found his, he's found his own mil militia and reinforcing his uh autonomy yeah, you know, so, I mean, you saw that in the park, right? I mean, he was starting to gather, like, uh, before you guys headed out for the evening. <clears throat> excuse me. He, he was starting to talk to more people, right? He was starting to kind of, like, you know, gather people to his cause almost, right? And so what would you teach? What would you be talking to him about? Or describe the interaction for me. I don't want to talk to him. I want to see how many people he's got and is he arming them and is he placing them around in places or does it look like he's just trying to uh, get people on his side like the other guy, like Mr. Democracy is? Yeah, you know, it, 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 he's talking to... If, am I assuming that I'm on the right broadcast and on the right screen? Yeah. So he's talking to like this small group of people here, right? And they seem to be, you know, they're leaning in to what he's saying to them, right? And so, you know, there's a, you get the feeling that he's starting to kind of like consolidate power almost, right? But you don't see anything, right? He's not handing weapons out. There's nothing like that. It's purely a conversation. But he does seem very pally with three or four people that he's hanging out with. And they leave together as well. They head out of the park together, right? So they kind of uh, whether they're going to continue their conversation elsewhere, or if their houses just all in the same kind of direction, whether or not you find it odd, they're all uh, heading in the the same direction. That's okay, as long as there's not a, as long as he's not got more than you know twenty percent, fifty percent of the people in the place. I'm happy with it. Yeah, no, it's just a few of them. Doesn't seem that many, you know. Now yeah, we're good to okay. All right. So um anything else like so, so Trent and his is a uh, little group of folks all wander off over time, and I don't know what time you guys are heading out this evening, but eventually kind of Mitchell wanders off as well. <clears throat> because this is choice. Okay, so <laughs> um and we don't judge. We don't judge. Oh, we right? don't judge. We don't judge. So, so they head off. Mitchell also heads away. Like the people start kind of like wandering away for the evening. A anything else you guys do before bed? Uh, 
All right. No, I'm I'm assuming in this my character's not much of a night owl, so he's probably not staying up much past dusk. Yeah, you know, if he's a fisherman, I would imagine that he is that early to bed, early to rise kind of guy. All right, so what are you going to do the next day, right? And I, I uh, let me put these activities again into chat for you. But uh, I, I, it sounded like a couple of you were going to be wandering or uh, heading out to, to check on the Home Depot. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Are you all going? Like, like what? What is what? What is the plan for the day? So it sounds like Mina or uh, Maria and I are going to go fishing, air quotes, and mm -hmm. um, I'm going to bring Lance along to speed up his trip so he doesn't have to walk the whole way, and then he can do whatever he needs at the Home Depot and bring it back and drop it off on the boat. What do you think, Teach? You want to go to Depot? Yeah, I don't fancy sticking around and answering uh, questionnaires all day, so yeah, I'm in. Plus, I don't want to be alone there. Uh, Maria, are you going with them or are you staying back? I'm, I'm going to go with Sven because I'm not quite sure what the plan is, but I'm really kind of curious about that plane. So if there's a chance I could get to see it, I, I, I totally forgot the, the politics or anything else. I'm just curious about the plane. So I'm going wherever Sven goes because he's the one I agreed with. All right, beautiful. So, um, so Sven, you're going by boat tomorrow, right? Yeah, probably about the same spot we did when we went to go save the girl. How big is your boat? Like, I know we haven't really put too much defin definition around it, but how how big is your boat? How many people can your boat carry? Oh, Jenny can carry a handful of people. Oh, we're gonna we're, we're leaving it, we're moving away from the gimp and going back to the Jenny. Is that right? <laughs> the Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. Don't be catching all my fish on Jenny. Okay. <laughs> uh. All right, Jenny the Gimp. Okay, I think we can come to a compromise there. All right, beautiful. So, okay, so no, no problem with that then. Um, it, it's a, it's a fairly nice day, right? And so you head out kind of early in the morning. Um, so there's not really any uh, issues getting there, right? So can you ping? Are we on the map? Yeah, can you ping on the map where you would land? Yeah, where you kind of come. Probably going to be about the same spot. So it's, I I think last time we landed just inside that little river right. outlet. Correct. So since they landed there and it worked pretty good, I'd probably land there again. All right. So, all right. So it's, um, hold on one second. Let me see. It's about, I think it's about half an hour walk still, like a 20 minute walk. Did you, I, I guess you didn't bring bikes, right? I had no intention. So if Lance and Teach wanted some, I mean, they could easily uh, load them up. I figure it'd be hard to carry back stuff if I was on a bicycle. So, I mean, it might be fast getting there, but I'd probably have to ditch it. If I'm carrying things, I don't know. That's why I was thinking like a wheelbarrow to push stuff back, yeah. at least to the, the shore to get back on the boat. They pick us back up, I hope. <laughs> All right. So it's going to take you about 45 minutes to walk there, right? So you kind of, you know, you, you, you're heading down, I guess, you know, how, how cautious are you being or kind of walk me through how you'd be approaching this journey, right? And, you know, kind of, again, freshly out into the world, not really, you know, the last time you were down at this end of the bridge, you ended up killing two people. So I guess walk, walk me through kind of the approach to, to Home Depot, kind of like, or, or are you going to the airport first? Like, what, what is it that you guys are doing? Um, I'm good with going to the airport first if they, they want to check that out first and then everyone stick together. Well, okay, yeah, if you want to go as a group of four, and then if nothing's there, it's uneventful, the two of you go to Home Depot, and we'll go fishing. All right, because that could be a really fast stop just to check, like, yep, no plane, boom, gone. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. So it's 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 about like a 20-minute detour to get there, right? So it takes you like a, a fair amount of time. You can't obviously go over this kind of like bridgey area, right? This why rather watery area, right? you got to kind of walk around and keep to the road. So it takes you a while to get there. Um then there's a there's like a chain link fence around it, right? I mean, the the airport looks like it was like a lot of places they kind of got abandoned, right? But like this wasn't a zombie apocalypse, right? Everything fell apart over the course of months, so there were things that kind of got locked up and people walked away and just never came back to them, right? 
So this airport, like as you kind of walk around, like the only entrance that you can find on the chain fence is is locked at the moment. So you know, you're kind of on the outside looking in at the moment. Um, I guess I'll use my binoculars and see if there's any activity at least. Yeah, so make a perception check uh, with a with a plus one modifier for the binoculars. Wow. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, <laughs> you it's very... Everything. It's very hard to tell, right? I mean, it, it looks it looks like um, the airport's in good condition, right? I mean, it, it, you know, it 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 it, it, it doesn't. You, you're very hard pressed to say whether or not it's been used from this distance. But as you're looking around, it, you, you start to notice like there's a couple of doors open on the buildings on the inside. Right, so like the, the buildings that are actually in the airport on kind of the inside of the chain link fence, so you can't see whether or not there's you know there's no activity. You can see there's no one moving around at the moment, but it strikes you as a little bit odd that you're at this airport where someone's gone to the you know the trouble of putting uh, a, a you know padlock and like like lock these chain fences together, but there's a couple of buildings on the inside that still seem to be unlocked. Well, I mean, I assume that. I, I mean, I'll say this to group that um i mean we're not at the front gate so i can't assume that nobody's been here at the time but it does seem odd that there are some doors left it feels like one of those things where like if the apocalypse happens i feel like i'd be the kind of person who'd still be driving you know the speed limit on the right side of the road yep. until it's like oh shit nobody else is here i can do what i want <laughs> so i have that i probably still have that mentality of like i feel like people would still be closing doors while they're going through their daily routine of doing things. So I would still point out that it seems odd that there's some doors left open, but I wouldn't put it past people to be going and raiding an airport. Because, I mean, let's be honest, there's food, there's luggage and other things, there's tools, equipment. Maybe not first pick, but, I mean. Yeah. And we can't see if the plane is there or anything. No, there's a bunch of hangers though, right? Let me put this image also into chat. Um, oh, I like his boat. The Jenny Gimp is a very good looking boat. So this, <laughs> this is the airport, right? So it, it, it's a fairly big place, right? I mean, like there's like, if you look over on the right hand side where it says T hangers and executive hangers and so on, this is not insignificant, right? I mean, and you're, you're kind of like on the outside of this, like where I don't see a fence on here, but for our purposes, you can't get in. You can't just wander onto this, right? So it's big enough that you can't see any single plane. And again, like you don't see any movement at all. Like it's almost like deathly still, except that some of these buildings, and again, I can't ping it because it's not in uh, Roll20, but some of these buildings, you see doors open and stuff. And like one of the hangers, like you can see the hangers and there's doors open on the hangers and stuff. So again, it seems to, to your point, it seems, John, it seems a little bit incongruent, but also kind of understandable just given what's gone on over the last like year or so. And uh, I guess I'll play the ignorant card, not knowing the difference between or how useful jet fuel would be, but pointing out the tanks that there seems to be fuel there. You know, um, let me let me Google something. Could you use plain? I'll look at the egghead and say, hey, maybe you want to check that out at the library while you're there. Would that be to teach? Yeah, teach in Lance. Let me make a note of that for you. Hey, Sven, do you have any um, do you have any mechanic skills? Oh, I have some tinker skills. Yeah, that that would work. So make make a make a tinker check. Yeah. So this never you, happens. What are these rolls? I have no idea. I think that's like <laughs> more playable. I think that's what it is, right? Or more enjoyable to the players, I should say. So I think the um, 
you, you, you'd you know that you could probably convert some of this fuel, right? It's not going to be a straightforward process, but like, you know, again, teach God the library will sort it out. There's probably books in there that you could figure out or something, right? But that that's, if there's any fuel here, you're pretty sure that you'd be able to convert it for use in your boat or convert your boat's use to take on this higher octane fuel. All right. Um, yeah, I think I'll definitely make a note of that so we can figure out how to get that carted over here. I'm sure we can find some sort of fuel truck that maybe we can keep working and get it over and figure something out. Um, hmm. Maybe it might be worth going around to see if anybody was here. See if that was a, uh, a one-off pit stop that somebody made or maybe someone starting some kind of base of operation. So walk me through what that would look like. Um, I I assume I probably have some tools on the boat, so I could probably, or if they're going to go to Home Depot, maybe they might want to go for a run. And since this is probably the quickest spot to my boat, they could grab some more tools that they need, load up the boat, and come back with something that we can cut through the fence and cut across the field, or I guess wrap around the, quote, right way into the airport so it looks a little less inconspicuous than walking across an open field. You know, so so this would be, you know, I'm looking at this place a little bit better. And again, sorry for not doing the, the right prep on this. This is a long journey for you guys, right? Particularly by foot, because this is this is largely impassable ter terrain, right? You'd really struggle to get across it. So you'd actually have to go. Oh, can you see my screen, by the way? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Okay. So you'd have to go all the way down here, right? And then kind of down and then over. And then let me bring over that other map. So that's kind of this area here. Let me show you. This area well, here. Yeah, this if that's the case, I would definitely talk about getting a fuel truck working and come here for a trip. Yeah. So I think, John, what we're going to say is all, all of the observation you did was over here, right? With your binoculars, it's enough flat land that you could see enough of the airport where you could kind of make out, you know, hey, so I see some open doors. But again, like now seeing the lay of the land, it, it would take you two, two and a half more hours to get there, right? So your day would really be about going to the airport rather than going to Home Depot. So what do you, what do you guys want to do? Are you going to continue on to Home Depot or are you going to make this detour to the airport? Yeah, if that's the case, I'd send those two to Home Depot and me and Maria go fishing while they're doing it. That's probably not a bad idea. Teach and uh, – this this is where you would get to, have to get to, by the way. So Teach and Lance, are you okay with – heading down to Home Depot and seeing if you can find equipment that you need while they go fishing? Yeah, yep. I'm okay. Beautiful. All right, um, Lance, let's have – sorry, um, Sven, let's have you and Maria make a group fishing check. <clears throat> Do you want that to be hunting or survival? Uh, I, either way, whichever is your highest score. Same for you, Maria. Oh, oh mine's going to be survival. Um. I don't know about you. Um, I'm looking, sorry. Got knowledge uh, it'll be on the right-hand side, N8. N8, okay. Um, so hunting? If that's uh, your higher survival. one. Survival's, survival's oh. my better one. Survival and hunting, I get, they're both zero. So if you oh. see in, oh. in the parentheses next to it, you see, like one will be is physicality based, and the other one is acumen based. Yeah. So if you have a higher physicality or acumen, that would be the better one to use. They're both zero. Oh, then I'm even. Okay, then I'm even. All right. So Sven, let's have you make a group check. I have a plus one C mod for the Jenny Gimp. <laughs> I'm sure you have some physicality. Wait, yeah. who? Mina's character. Yeah, oh, but not for survival or hunting. Oh, yeah, but I'm saying between acumen and physicality, one might be the higher. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. If you're looking at your character sheet. Yeah, I just... Uh, do you see reason, acumen, and physicality at the top of the sheet? The physicality is one, and acumen yeah. is two. There you go. Yeah, yeah so, so do survival then. Yeah, so if you look under Survivor, under innate skills, it's got survival and then in brackets ACU. 
Okay. So what he's saying is, like, for the benefit of this, you'll get the accu you'll get plus two for that check rather than plus one if he went with hunting. That makes sense. Okay, I got you. And make sure you click the group check. Uh oh. Um. Okay. Group so check. top right corner. I'm gonna do survival since acumen's higher. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. Two. And. Yep. So, um, you've got enough because you do it from your boat, right? You're able to pull enough in where there's, uh, there's enough food for the four of you to have a lunch. Um, and then also to eat that evening, right? So you've caught enough to, to feed four people for the course of the day as you're kind of, you and Maria kind of like dinking around there. Make sense? Real tacos. God, do it. Well, let's see what you can find as you're heading down to, Home Depot. So as well as Home Depot, and I think I'm still sharing, is, uh, down here there's Home Depot, but there's also Costco, there's a Walmart, a bunch of different stuff, right? And you're going past tractor supply and like tire, fast lube and oil, a bunch of different things on your way down there. So are you heading down and going straight Dude, to Home Depot? What are you what's, doing? What's the level of looting? Like just just glancing as, as we go, like this, are they look pretty intact or are they like – looking cleaned out like, oh, this is looking like a, a bad deal going to Home Depot. Yeah, you know, um, everywhere's, ev everywhere you see has been opened, right? Like there's there's nothing that looks closed anymore, right? And if, you know, if you guys were talking about it, you'd compare notes and you'd realize that what Sven saw, uh, it, it, the airport is very neat and tidy and well looked after compared to what you're seeing here, right? So you're seeing that as you poke your head into places, there's something everywhere, right? There's not necessarily a lot everywhere, but there's something everywhere, right? So things have been looted, but, you know, in these smaller areas, like it wasn't like it was in cities where there was kind of crazy fighting over belongings and the looting, right? Like enough people died out here. The people weren't really looting Home Depot so much as maybe, you know, all the people that lived in this area would just go to Home Depot and take what they had while there was still something there. It wasn't looting per se. Make sense? Yeah. And tractor supply they have a lot of hardware kind of stuff too as well as yeah. they might have oh yeah so that might be worth visiting first they even got pet food yeah well i don't well do we have any pets pet, <laughs> well at least pet supplies and farming supplies yeah yeah they do have farming stuff yeah so let's have you um let's have you make a scavenging check and if teachers there with you again it's a group check but let's give you a plus one um, because, again, like you're, you're, you're in the right kind of place that would have the kind of stuff that you're looking for. So a plus one C mod on a group scavenging check for you and teach. Groups checked for me. All right. Where? Oh, I see it. Can I just click it? Yep. Or, oh, I got to click the group check too, right? Yeah, yep. click group yeah. check and then click scavenging. That didn't work. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> So, so t walk me through what it was that you were looking for in there. That didn't work. Um, because it didn't, it didn't work. Mine. No, I've it got didn't? group. No, I've got group check. Yeah. yeah, it's got Maria and Sven. I've got group check clicked up above. Have you got it clicked? I have it clicked on my character cheat sheet but i didn't get one of those little boxes popped up like uh the survival check did there we go right. okay oh, that was ah uh, there you go click on that one instead uh it's 11 because it should be another plus one if it was plus one and we could pretend the first roll was the, the roll <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey it worked right so and it says group scavenging check even if it didn't come out the way we thought so so you, it was a success so what what are you looking for in there specifically what are you hoping is in there i guess that's a good question um i don't know if they would have copper tubing or that sort of thing they might have tubs you know those uh Kind of, I don't know. What are you after? Uh, distilling supplies in large quantities. 
So I guess tubing. I mean, you'll be able to find all they might have bins plastic tubing. They might have some plastic tubing. Uh, they might have some. They might. You think they might Tanks, have like bags pumps. of like oats, like for horses if they're selling like I mean, feed, animal <laughs> feed. So they might have. They might have some like grains. Yeah, but it'll be processed grain, not grain grain. I suspect. If it'll if it'll make alcohol. The yeast like it. Here we go. <laughs> Just pulling up there. There. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Like that'll make it easier. So I'm pulling up. Yeah, there I'm with... looking on their website now. I mean, they've got storage tanks, pumps. They've got pipe fittings. I mean, if you don't have copper tubing, which I they should i mean at least you'll have fittings out the butt if um, they don't then the home depot might get yourself a car cool. ready and leave it in the parking lot for your trip yeah. back and if and if the home depot doesn't then hopefully for sure the brewery company does so let, let's have you make uh, a scavenging check all right just a solo one or yeah this is, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, There's so Teach finds a tractor, and we should have probably <laughs> done this as a group uh, thing. But Teach finds a tractor, and the tractor's got enough gasoline to get you down to the Home Depot at least, right? So it's kind of like, hey, we can ride there, and you can pull along a car behind you, right? So whatever you take from here, and there is a bunch of uh, stuff you you could use for the distilling purposes. There's also a couple of like, you know, like uh, wheelbarrows and a few different bits and pieces. Right. But you are going to need to go to the Home Depot to find like copper piping and that kind of stuff. All right. OK, yeah, that works as long as we're not worried about making too much noise because Jack could make a lot of noise. That's up to you. I mean, I just drove up here in a boat, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful. So are you going to drive the tractor down to the Home Depot? Yep. Teaches. He's going to drive. All right, beautiful. So I, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I'll drive, it, I'll drive it like I stole it at two miles an hour because it's a tractor. I mean, you can get at least 12 to 14 miles an hour out of a new tractor. Like, you're downplaying it terribly. Hey, let's have you both make a perception check just to see if you notice uh, anything or anyone along the way. Yeah, that the guy's about to jump us. Du -du -du. You better hit the gas so <laughs> that tractor should be out on him. <laughs> Are you off duty at the moment? Aren't you a bodyguard? Yeah, Thanks. I'm just, I'm just, you just, I'm looking at the clouds. I'm enjoying the day. Possibly take the, uh, shades off given it's say, Hey, there's a lady. rabbit up there. And, th yeah. and that one looks like Albert Einstein. So it, it, it looks pretty, it, it looks pretty quiet to you teach. Right. But it's almost suspiciously quiet. You know what I mean? And it not, not in the sense that. Um, someone's going to lay a trap for you, but you've now gone a fair amount of distance and you just haven't seen anyone, right, or, or anything. So it's almost, again, it's almost too quiet for your liking. Are we in a modern one? Because it'll have closed cab and all of that sort of stuff, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice one, mate. It's, it's, I, I wouldn't jip you at the end of the world with your tractor, right? It's <laughs> a nice one. <laughs> yeah, it's a really nice one. <laughs> you want Mercedes? You get Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't. Hey, the John Deere is okay for me. It's uh, motherfucking okay. Deere, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, we I'll got, tell we Lance. got the mobile of tractors. Actually, it's bulletproof. <laughs> I tell Lance, I got spidey sense tingling. It's a bit too. We haven't seen anything. There's no animals around. Seems a bit weird. Why? What do you see? Where's it at? Well, I don't see anything. That's the problem. Normally, we'd see sort of the occasional thing flying away or, you know. 
so so just to sort of kind of like mock him for getting my attention when he doesn't see anything i'll just kind of like oh i see something and then start like so, start looking around again sort of sarcastically but really looking too <laughs> well, maybe you're just winding sense. up page Alternatively, you can get out and walk so they've got so it can be back into something. <laughs> you know, when he said it was a closed cab, he meant it was closed to you, right? Yeah. So you've got to get out. Back and walk, mate. I'm standing on the back. He yeah. sit on top. <laughs> I assume right, we're making so... an inordinate amount of noise because we're scraping something along behind us as well, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you're not scraping, but you're pulling a cart, right? So there's a lot of kind of like just jingle jangle as you're moving along. Yeah. So, you know, really anyone within earshot would be able to hear you, right? They wouldn't have to make a perception check, right? If there was someone kind of close enough to hear this noise, they would pretty much automatically hear it because it's, again, it, it's out of place. We got a uh, front loader on the front. I, you're the farm boy. What is a front loader? Uh, big bucket. Oh, big bucket. I don't know. What is the big? Oh, 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 you mean like a, like a bulldozer? Like it would like lift a something digger, up? Yeah, yeah like a digger. Yeah, the, the scooper. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Okay. In which case, I'll start fiddling around with the controls to start learning them other than the go because they get kind of insane. Well, Lance can look out for what the heck we're supposed to do to keep us safe. Yeah, I'm relying on you, I, Lance. If anything happens, another, uh, I'm giving them your another name. Another perception check with that, you know, my my uh, sarcastic looking around. And I'll take away your uh, bodyguard license if we get jumped. <laughs> I feel like someone took that away from him already. Hmm. It expired last month. <laughs> it's getting it renewed in the pandemic. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, All they, right, I, so I sent them the papers. <laughs> You can stamp it yourself now, mate. No one's going to be able to check up on you. <laughs> All right, so you get to Home Depot. <coughs> Excuse me. You get to Home Depot. Let's have you make a perception check. And how are you approaching it? Are you just <coughs> driving up to the front door? It's not like we're sneaking around, so yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Ten foot tall tractor, bright green <laughs> with an orange front loader on the front Sneak of it. Sneak it around back. Yellow front loader on the front. Yeah. We'll take it from behind. On tiptoes. <laughs> All right, so you, you've come down this way and along here, and you've pulled up at the front of the Home Depot, right? So um, let's have you, again, did, if you didn't just do it, let's have you make another perception check specific to the Home Depot. There we go. Oh, Jed, how could you took you? Yeah. Oh, I That's love awesome. it. Oh, I love it. It's, so you took exception of the way the uh, teach has been mocking you, right? Because you don't see, you've got your sunglasses on. So you're doing almost your bionic eyes, right? You're like that guy from CSI Miami with you, his you sunglasses, the, right? Yeah, you hear the hawk sound like pew. Yeah, I saw exactly. Something. Yeah, and then the who start playing, who are you? Yeah, no, that'd be perfect. So, um, so, so you, you notice that as you're kind of going in, as you're pulling up to it, like you can't help but feel this. It does feel a little bit, um, a little bit like unusual, not what you'd expected, right? So the, you know, the the big kind of like roller doors at Home Depot, they kind of pulled up, right? So it's just open to the elements, right? But like as you as you kind of step inside, it doesn't feel like it's been raided, right? It doesn't. It, it feels much more like people are just coming in as I mentioned earlier, and taking the things that they want rather than anyone came in and just tried to ransack the place, right? So it has this weird kind of feeling like you, you could almost be expected or you could be forgiven for thinking someone might walk in on you at any moment. You know what I mean? From the outside or from the inside? As, as you walk in, right? Like it's kind of like, you know, it starts from the outside very quiet. You don't see anything, but there's a couple of entrances. As you get on the inside, again, it's almost like, you know, 
it, it's a Sunday morning and they've just opened, right? Because there's, you know, things missing from the shelves, but it doesn't look like, again, the, the tornadoes run through the place so much as people have gone in there and taken just what they needed. Let's be careful. In this. this is a, you think this is a trap? Well, if it's a trap, wouldn't they make it more normal looking? Like raided? I suspect it's being mm -hmm. looked after. How close is this to where we picked up? Because the, the weirdos were escaping down the highway. I can't tell what number yeah, that was. Yeah, if you can, Are we if you in can that see direction? My, yeah, 100%, right? I'm not sure if you can see mm -hmm. my screen. You can. So that um, that yellow dot is where, oh, sorry, the yellow exclamation mark is where you killed them, right? Yeah. This over here where the hand is at the moment, that's where Home Depot is, right? So around here was the tractor place. So you guys kind of like hoofed it down here. They found the tractors, drove around, came to the Home Depot. But yeah, up here was where you found them. And they were actually heading in this direction. Yippee. Yeah, the way, the way we went. <laughs> yeah. So what are we looking for? We're looking for copper or glass tubing. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever and we do, let's make copper it quick. tubs or stainless steel tubs and those little oh. gauges that tell you when the carbon dioxide is done bubbling. We need some of those. Can we just get brewer kits with the, the big glass bell jar things? Yeah, we got some of those. We'll get we'll get those. Let's let's have you make a, a scavenging check. Uh and a, pl a plus. Feel free to make it a group check, but a plus one because it's a it's a Home Depot. Are, are we better check. doing solo checks, or are we better doing a group check? Group check gives you better odds, but uh, if you're doing it independently, you get to roll twice, right? So you could argue that hey, like rather than increase my odds of like getting a better score, it's better to play twice. What do you want to? Should we? Should we stick together or split up? <laughs> uh, let's stick together. Group check. Hit your group right. check and Alrighty. click the button. Here we go. Uh, pew. Uh, plus one. Yep. There you go. Roll. 13. Oh, yes. One off. You find everything you need, right? So there's. Uh, <laughs> there's copper piping, there's glass piping, there's a copper tube to ferment stuff in. You even, you know, you find... Do they uh, even have, like, maybe even a small section that was dedicated to brewing? You know, I think they would, right? So, um... Because it's that kind of town. It's that kind of town. Let's have you make, um... Make a D6 roll on one to three, wouldn't they? I've never actually gone looking for brewing stuff. Sven, I've never gone looking for brewing stuff at Home Depot. You sound doubtful. I mean, I, I could argue some home appliances and, like, outdoor grilling and stuff. I don't know about brewery stuff. But like, then again, I haven't brewing? been there in, like, six months. So, Oh, they've definitely updated it to brewing stuff in, like, three months ago. Conveniently. Yeah, half the store's devoted to it now, I hear. <laughs> right next to my vape store but, but only in the Astoria uh, area because it's big down there and not anywhere else <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's home beer po now Grass, grassroots operation yeah Rose RS is like half the yeah. labeling on the side <laughs> oh Matt you so home crazy brew. And brew oh, they, instead of depot. And depot. And depot. And depot. The home brew. That's what you can turn it into <laughs> there, the home brew. Um, Sounds so fancy, do, almost French. Yeah, a brew. -po. They do have, you know, I. No, I was going to say, like, the one, one of my pet peeves in life, my name is Bushel, and all Americans seem to want to pronounce it much more European, so I get called Tony Bushel all the time. Like, it's a really oh. fucking exciting name when it's really flat and uninteresting, just Bushel. But anyway, <laughs> so they, they, have, they have the kind of thing that you're looking for, and I was going to say, 
zero, you've already done it. But I was to say one to three, they have what you're looking for. Four to six, they don't. So home to brew. Um, so they have all of this stuff, right? So they've got everything you would need in order to create this still and take it back to like you can put all of this on the back of the tractor and there's enough gasoline to get you all the way back over to the other side of the uh, back home to a store area again take score teach sweet we should have some books back at the uh, library to help us along as well oh i wouldn't burn books let's let's burn coal or wood <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's enough glasses. dead people you should just burn their belongings. I think that's what you need to be burning. Polish pewter. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as you two are heading back up, let's have you both make uh, an individual perception check. Actually, you know what? You know what? Make an acumen check because I'm trying to, like, I've removed this, I've mo removed perception from the most recent set of rules, right? So just make an just acumen please. check. Just solid acumen, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't see anything on the way back, but you can't shake the feeling that you're being watched, right? There's just something like there's something kind of creepy. You, you kind of remark on it to each other. You don't see anyone, but it just feels like, you know, and maybe, maybe it's just paranoia because in all this time, you've literally seen no sign of life, right? Which seems, you know, e even up here in, in Astoria, in a smaller area, You've seen more life than you've seen down, like in this 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 drive down here, which has been nothing. So it just feels like kind of weird. When we get so, to the so, interstate, yeah. when we get to the interstate, then here, yeah. Well, we're coming across this bridge. Yeah, can we see anyone behind us or anyone over here? Because it's kind of isolated. Yes, yeah? nowhere to hide or anything. You know, so know you, you've ever it, driven a, a John Deere before, but the the speed settings go from like rabbit to turtle. So I'm going to make sure we push it up to the rabbit. No, but seriously, they go rabbit to turtle. Uh, we we can get a, a good speed out of a big one. They're roadworthy. Yeah. So. Yeah. So push it to rabbit. Yeah. All right. So let's have you say you're looking back as you get up there one last time when you have like a clear vantage point, right? If we're feeling sketchy, yeah. And we might, take, make, uh, might take this road down here. <laughs> what are we looking for uh, another acumen or yep you have another yeah. acumen check I feel, I feel like we're just swapping perception for acumen there we go all those points I put perception. Perception. yeah well i uh, don't disagree well so, so, so all right so all right this is play system right so help me figure this out right so <laughs> if I understand what you were saying about perception, right? I understand this idea that, hey, it just becomes that almost like mandatory. Everyone's got to have it, blah, blah, blah. But I feel that there has to be a way of seeing whether or not your character can see something in game without me telling you that they're seeing something in game and then that us making that determination, right? So, so if it's, we can talk about this later if you want to, but I slapped what I just put in Roll20 in Discord for later. Okay. I did. I can have passive perception zero one. Oh, like like add C mods. No, just outright. Like if you have no acumen, then you're not going to notice the su the subtle things. But if you have like an acumen of two, oh. you're going to start noticing more and more things depending on if it's story relevant or not. So in this case, so teach and Lance, what are your what are your acumens? Uh, two. One. Two. So. So what you're saying, John, like not to make a perception check, but to make, in fact, no check and just base this on, well, like Teach is more perceptive than the average bear and he's more perceptive than Lars. Sounds like uh, passive perception, yeah. but with Ackerman. Sort of. So like a zero would be like you can notice a lone guy down the road, but let's say he's walking through a tall grass field. One may or may not see it, but two would. And then, I don't know two would be able to see a deer running through the forest maybe and a quick off the cuff i think it more or less relates to for me perception would more or less relate to what you're doing so for lance he's much more keyed into people following things around him blah 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 but um i would be more more profession based yeah so I would notice a room full of people. I would notice someone doing something strange that nobody else would do. Um, 
but I, I would just roll them as <laughs> I would just roll them as um, without the players knowing because what all, all, all that's happening is you're making us really aware and we're freaking out so now no, we do I, weird I, I, stuff no I, I disagree right because like if I'm being very transparent like right now I hadn't expected this to happen I thought something was going to happen back in the story right so right now, like I'm reacting to the perception roles, right? Meaning the because there's been like because I mean again, like you just got a success on this, right? So that would change this role. But right now there's nothing to see, right? And so I again doing this a little bit ass backwards, maybe, but I'm I'm if you got a perception role and succeeded on it, like you just did, or with the acumen role, there's something for you to see now. So, but but I, I'm with you. I know what you're saying, Matt, about, well, like, you're, you're asking me to see if I noticed something, and then I'm like, oh, you don't notice anything, right? So it creates that sense of, like, oh, but there was something for me to see, right? So I totally get what you're saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to make this work. But again, Teach just got the acumen, right? So <clears throat> Teach kind of um, back down this road, like, as you're heading just to the uh, the edge of the, 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 the bridge, and by the way, Maria and, and uh, Sven, where are you when you hear this uh, uh, this tractor driving up? And what do you guys do? Um, I'm assuming that we're probably saying somewhere uh, somewhere near the coast. Um, I might be tending to be on this side of the bridge, just to, you know periodically keep checking towards the airport. Um, and if I'm hearing a tractor coming up, I mean I'm a boat in the middle of the water. It's not like uh, it's not. It's not like I can hide. So, I'm probably just drawn towards them, looking with binoculars, see what's coming up the road. You know, and and John, like I think if we go back to, um, I don't even know what the uh, science is about, but um, or was in reference to. But if you go back to that picture of the airport that I sent you, if you're out here, like on the boat, using your binoculars, you got you got such a good score earlier that you would be able to see into the airport a little bit more. You know what I mean? And it would confirm what you'd seen mm -hmm. about, hey, there's hangar doors open, right? But there are fuel sure. tanks there, and there's probably stuff in there. The, the you know, you'll take anything you can scavenge at this point that might keep uh, the Jenny Gimp in the, in the water a little bit longer. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I'd be checking over there because, I mean, if there was a flight that came out last night, that I'd be periodically checking to see if there's anybody walking around on the field so it'd be like a quick glance take a peek scan all right 20 minutes later maybe take a quick look while i'm waiting for a fish to bite so it's not like i'm intently sure. watching overwatch you're just keeping your eye on it as you're kind of like moving around in this vicinity yeah yeah, yeah. see if there maybe there's another flight coming out getting ready yeah you, you see nothing right and again this is all taken you know, for um, I, I'm not sure you were exactly waiting for for Teach and for for Lance to head out or to do whatever, but for them to get down to Home Depot and get back again, it's now, you know, it's 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 early afternoon. You know, it's like it's a couple of hours that like it's been it's it's, it's probably like noon or one o'clock ish, right? And so, um, Teach again, you, you out of the corner of your eye, and you, unless you go back and start looking for it, you can't pin it down. But you, you, a couple of times when you've looked over your shoulder as you're heading to the bridge, you do think you've seen movement behind you, right? And you're not sure if it's your, you know, your mind playing trick on, on yourself or if you you know, if you need glasses or what, or maybe it was like a mirage or whatever. But you, you think you saw movement back there. Uh... I'll tell Lance as we're driving forwards and I'll keep facing forwards as to without looking back over my shoulder. I think we should drive where? down <laughs> here uh, down the the main road. Yeah, wh whereabouts here. are we when when this happens? Are we over? Oh, no, no. When this happened, you were back over here still, right? You were oh, just no, heading we're... onto the bridge, right? And you saw movement back around here somewhere, right? And again, like, it's very vague, right? So maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But it was back over here. So, Matt, you're saying by the time you get back over here, you're going to head down this here and then, like, up the middle, presumably, right? Is that right? Yeah, I think I think so, because we get more chance to accidentally sort of see what might be going on over there. And it doesn't give them a 
direct route to follow us into the so that notwithstanding, I'm assuming that if I see them and it's them on the tractor after hearing the horrendous noise they're making, I'm sure I would have thrown like a thumbs up or whatever. And if they're going across the the bridge, I'd probably just let them. And then me and Maria would just finish up fishing like we normally would any other day and then probably go back to port. Lance, can I let you off here so that you can... Have you got a rifle or anything? Oh, yeah. Well, I have a I have a gun. Scope? No scope. 360. Binoculars? Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me check. Some binoculars? I'm assuming when we're over here, then they're not going to be able to see us particularly well, but they'll see the tractor, but we can use the binoculars as we're driving along the front and see what is over here without you, drawing attention to us. Yeah. Do you, do you have, who has the binoculars? That's uh, Sven. I do not. Them. I have a lot. I don't wonder if I've got any. Uh, it's a shame you didn't think to look some of those when you were down at the Home Depot, hey? Yeah, well, I walked down that aisle. I just don't know why I didn't grab one. Next I mean, I got a on aisle, next, next to the brewer's aisle. Like the I've got a carbine. Does that have a skip on top? No, mate. Okay. Well, not unless you wanted to spend uh, uh, an inside dice getting yourself something. Uh, let's see what we got. How about the... Uh, the rear view mirror can i just keep an eye it through it just to watch behind yeah, us without the turning around incredibly vibrating in a track the rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um did everybody just drop the chat or something weird i make my legs spot. go jelly so so that it's weird going going for you john uh okay i will spend an insight dice can you take one off me Ian? yeah uh, i'll i'll hand the binoculars that i find underneath the seat over to John Deere's got everything. I think it's got like a bunch of stuff. There's some, there's some sweets or something as well. Someone's just left them all in there, and we've half hitched the, the good one. John Deere box of holding. It was the demo model, mate. It was the it was the model that was like you know like rolled into the showroom. So now I I, yeah. I don't think there's any sweets in there. It's, it's the the post apocalyptic survival model. All right, so um, all right, sorry, I was ordering Matt there, um, or yeah, his character sheet. So, can you make another? Are you looking back over this way using the binoculars, right? Yeah, I'll give them to Lance. All right. So, yeah, Lance, let's have you take glasses off, mate. I wipe them off. All right, let's have you make a perception check plus plus one. It would be plus two, but you're on a bouncing tractor and it's not, it doesn't lend itself that well, you know? Did you put binoculars in my equipment? I don't see. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I can do. Sorry, mate. I'll do it. I don't. Cool. Tom. Yeah, I can see the red Mohawks from here. All right, perfect. Sorry, I didn't see that that December check uh, come up. All right, so sorry, the perception check. All right, beautiful. So you do see a couple of people, right? So as you you know, as you're kind of getting to here, you see some people that are kind of moving up, right? And there's like maybe three of them, right? It's hard to tell because again, you're bouncing around at these kind of little stick figures. So maybe there's a couple more, but they they it's almost like they've been following your progress, right? As you kind of what you know, watch you go over here in the tractor and then drive down there. The spike on his shoulder pads are glinting in the sun. No shoulder pads. Not no yet. leather. Yeah, no boomerangs either. They've all got accents like the people you live with, though, Matt. Um, 
All right. So, so what are you going to do? You, you're going to head back that way. You're going to head back to, uh, you know, back to kind of like, you, you know, your home base as it were. What are you guys doing now? Uh, I figure we should be telling the guys that this is a, this could be bringing us company soon across the bridge. When you say guys, like who is it that you're telling? Uh, Mr. Military, Mr. Dictator. Give him some All right, so like the villagers. Yeah. I'll hand out some pitch box. <laughs> All right, so Lance and Maria, what uh sorry, um Sven and Maria, are you are you meeting them back? Like what what are you guys doing now? Um is it like around noontime at this point? Yeah. All right, at noontime, then I am assuming that I'm making my way back to port for the for the morning and probably calling it a day for fishing. You know, so I, I think you'd probably get back to the dock around... Oh, let me get back to a screen where I can ping. So I think the... In fact, let me put us onto a map of the town. All right. <clears throat> so you'd get back to your dock, which is here, around the same time that they'd be coming up kind of Main Street and getting back to the area that you guys have been uh, spending most of your time. So um, it, you, you've got the, the tractor and you've got your supplies. Lance, where, where are you going with it? Are you going to your house? My house? I, I figure maybe I could set up one of the abandoned houses just to be the uh, the spot for it. You know, like someplace with, or maybe even like, is there a, a cleared out warehouse, just an empty spot like that, or a big you know, garage? Yeah. So for the for the sake of uh, just moving this along, so over here somewhere is a semi-industrial area, right? And there's, you know, a warehouse that that basically has been like a little bit run down, a little bit. Oh, a story of brewing company. Yeah, may, maybe a place that had been for sale, you know, so it was already empty. I don't. Have yeah, to clear actually. It out. So I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Astoria Brewing Company, you know, between oh, what perfect. you've got and at a, at a rough guess, because you still haven't studied the books and kind of learned the knowledge, but based on what you kind of flicked through or what you saw when you were flicking through, between what you've got and what they already had in the Astoria Brewing Company, you'd be able to use that to create both ethanol for driving vehicles as well as. Um, uh, you know, for alcohol for yourself, for your, for your hedonistic future. So, you know, it'd take you a while to set it up, right? On oh, top yeah. of how long uh, it would take you to learn to do this, which is like like really a week to, yeah. to read and digest. I imagine, I imagine it'll be a little bit of trial and error and some note-taking and, you know, making sure I don't make anybody blind and all that fun stuff. Exactly right. So it take um, a week to a week for you to read this, a week to convert this place, and then probably a week to get it right. Right. So it take you like three weeks or so in terms of like setting everything up, gathering the supplies, getting the knowledge, and then running through a couple of uh, trial and error attempts. It take you probably three weeks to get it working. All right. Cue the montage music. <laughs> Very nice. Um, all right, so that, that does actually bring us back to um, – let me share my screen again and do that weird trippy shit. All right, so it does bring us back to what you guys would be doing, right? So the first day was really scavenging, right? And so I guess for you, Lance, right, I mean, no reason that you wouldn't be able to take part in this, but are you going to spend some time studying, like, and getting this – or are you just going to kind of put that on the back burner and see what happens over the next week or so? Like, what what is your plan in oh, terms no, of – this is my my project, my hobby. So you know, I'll be spending you know a, a considerable amount of time per day doing this. All right. So Assuming I don't neglect my other needs. Like I still eat and mingle with the other people. You know, I'm not gonna become uh, you know a hermit. <laughs> become a slave. I'm yeah. not gonna turn into Isaac Newton. So I guess you know, I I um. You might want to make some kind of like a request to someone in the group or some kind of, you know, maybe you can talk to Mike, with the uh, sorry, Mark, the guy with the bike and see if he'll bring you some food. But you're going to have to figure out how you how, how you do that. If you're going to be spending, you know, most of the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to find some stuff. 
But, you know, in order for you to really get through this and kind of learn, you're probably going to have to get someone to, to bring you some food or at least uh, take some of that burden from you. And, you know, I'd be making some IOUs for the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're making boots. Yeah, that's going to make you a very popular boy. I'm handing them out. I got the IOU notepad, you know. I thought he was making fuel. Wait I'm, a minute. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Uh, hey, you took a phone call. You missed out. Don't, don't, don't come oh. back to us with a judgmental attitude, young lady. You, oh, don't, you don't took worry. that phone call. You this took that phone call. 195 proof. It'll, it'll run anything. I, I, I took the phone call, but still, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, that's your man. You know him better than anybody else. You know what he gets up to, and it's this, <laughs> making booze for strangers. I like it. I like it a lot. It. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so that evening, right, so you get a chance to kind of share some of this news, right? And so, um, you know, you've had kind of a day together and gone out exploring. It's become commonplace now to, to have, uh, for all of you to kind of gather at that park with like, you know, with Tom, like Mark and everyone else. So are you guys heading over there for the evening uh, to cook that fish that, that uh, Sven caught for everyone today, or are you doing something else? Wait, Sven is almost dead? Jerome is the... Fish I think he's trolling me because of a phone call. <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I, have to, I, I, have to re, I might have to refresh roll 20, but I've got like one in everything. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting you back. I don't know quite what happened there. Um, all right, the break point is legit because you got that because you were involved in killing yeah. someone. But the health... Yeah, you're, you're back. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember you getting hurt last week. Did you get hurt in... You didn't get hurt, did no, you? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. My little prince, who's going to lay their hands <laughs> on you? <laughs> There's That's that 14-year-old, right. I think. All right, so are you guys going to head down to uh, the, the park, kind of, again, as has as become kind of like more commonplace, or are you going to do something else this evening? What, what's your plan? Um, I'm probably just going to report back to Trent and tell him what I saw and – Maybe inquire about what he got accomplished today. I'll follow. I'll follow Spin. All right. What about Teach and Lance? What are you guys up to? I think yeah, Lance I think has got his head in the book. Head in there. Well, I mean, as like part of the evening hangout, I figure I'll be part of that. That's like the normal thing to do now. All right, and teach you. I'm presuming you're going to search out some books for Lance. <laughs> <laughs> more, more books. <laughs> Here, I found these. <laughs> How to cope with addiction after the apocalypse? Is that is that version two? Is that what you found for him? You like Pretty Robert much. Frost too, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like triple A uh, apocalypse. Yeah. Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> I'll give him the prepper ones on how to make the alcohol for uh, fuel <laughs> rather than intoxicating himself. And then wish for right, the thing so he, he uses it for the right manner. All right, so he now has a book on making booze as well as making fuel. Is that right? Other way around. Well, he already had the book on making fuel. What, what have you given him the book on now? Uh, okay, if he's already got one. Uh, I was going to give him the prepper's guide to it rather than... So it's designed with not much in mind. So, yeah, fuel, exactly. It echoes fuel. Very nicely done there, Mina. So, no, I, I, I agree, right? So I so last week he did find a book on converting about basic engine maintenance and then another one on converting engines to, to run on ethanol. So the book you just found in him is... Home brewing for desperate people. Is that right? Volume four. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Also known as how not to go blind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, beautiful. So so that, that evening you're all in the park. And um, so Sven, you, you said that you're going over and talking to Trent. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, tell him what I saw that it looked like. You know, at some point, it seems like, I mean, obviously, besides the last night, that someone has been there. Um, I mean, it doesn't 
there's no, it, it's hard to tell if someone's like set up a camp or anything. I don't really think so. But um, I did see fuel tanks, and it might be worth taking a truck over and starting to siphon that fuel out. So he, he kind of nods appreciatively, and he says, like, you didn't see any any signs of life. Like, you know, a couple of us heard that plane last night, but you didn't see any signs of that going overhead or anything. No, not today. Not that we saw. But it's definitely worth a trip back there sometime. He, 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 he nods, right? And he's kind of like, he obviously seems in agreement. He, he asks you if you've seen um, a fuel truck. He, he, he doesn't remember seeing one. So he just asks you and a couple of the guys around him. But like, it's, in, it's almost in accordance with your idea. It's like, cool. Has anyone seen a, f a, f a fuel truck or know where we can get one? So none of the guys do. <clears throat> he asks you, Sven, did you notice one when you were over there? Is there one at the airport that you guys could use? Um, I don't recall seeing one, but I can't imagine them not having one, or at least some way to siphon fuel out. Um, I mean, just thinking back to just airports in general. Yeah, you know, you've got, you've got a wild success. I'm going to keep coming back to that, right? I think that there was uh, a tank there or a tanker there, and you saw it, right? So when, when he says that, it kind of rings a bell with you. You're like, yeah, you know, now, now that you say that, there was one by the fuel area. <clears throat> Uh, I'm kind of hanging around Sven because I kind of want to see what Trent's up to. Does he have like an entourage of people around him? He does. So he's got like there's you know like three or four guys with him, and it's all the people that you saw him with last night, right? And so he seems to have, without overstating this, right? He seems to have, uh, uh, I don't say consolidated power, but he seems to have convinced these people that his way is the right way, right? There's at least four or five people now. They're not acting weird or menacing, right? But it's like they're standing around talking to each other, and they're all, you know, they'll obviously know each other, oh, yeah. but they do seem to be hanging on Trent's every word. Yep, and that's how it starts. So I'm, I'm. That's the reason why I, I went with Sven to talk to Trent because I'm not liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> so. Now, even after a day of canvassing, does it seem like there's more people congregating yeah. here than nights prior? Yeah, it does, and it's something the the old Tom mentions to you, right? So at one point, he, he kind of he's taken he's kind of taken some pride in this, right? That this has become not exactly his event, right? But he was the one that started coming here, and like more and more people are coming along. So at some point, he makes comment to one of you about like this is the best turnout yet, right? And you know, he, he also makes a comment, or maybe it's Mitchell that makes a comment, but somewhere along the way, he says that it's been kind of a busy day, right? There was a lot of doors that were knocked on, and there's a lot more people around than, than anyone thought, right? Like, you see people here and there, and there's been people coming to the park, but when you start kind of, like, knocking on doors and seeing people and walking the docks and the different areas around the outside of the, the island, there, there, there's a lot more people here than anyone had realized, or that people are giving them credit for. So, yes, the park seems busier, and according to Tom um, and, and to Mitchell, it's probably because there has been some canvassing going on. Well, yeah, it's probably beyond time to come out the cave and start living again. Say that again, John. I said it's probably beyond uh, the time to come, come out of the cave finally and start living again. That certainly seems to be the spirit. Right, or the, the kind of the prevailing sentiment, right? It's just like uh, there's a sense, of, as I mentioned last week, there's a sense, or last time, there's a sense almost of, of optimism amongst people, right? That this is, you know, the, the may, maybe things are, if not going to get back to normal, maybe things aren't going to be the, you know, the Mad Max post apocalyptic wasteland that everyone has started to think it was going to be for a while. So that is the prevailing sense at the moment. So, since it is a large number of people, I wonder if anybody here has been trying like ham radios or things like that, communicating with other towns or other groups out there. I know that's not my my expertise, but I didn't know if somebody else might might have been trying that. I mean, I have one on the boat, so I assume if I heard anything, I'd tell anybody. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be the cap on it, actually. So, you know, Sven isn't on his boat 24-7, but he hasn't heard anything, right? And so without asking everyone individually, all signs would point to no at the moment. But that's, you know, no through uh, lack of knowledge rather than no through kind of confirmed no. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I guess we're going to have to find the uh, the ham radio books for teach. Oh, yeah, good point. And someone put in chat, it's uh, authority put in chat. Yeah, you, you, last week, Teach actually cataloged the uh, 
um, the library. So he knows where pretty much everything is. So uh, the the he, he's kind of become the de facto librarian because of his background as a teacher. So we have a pretty good understanding of what's in the library. Um, there would be a book there on how to build your own ham radio if you wanted to. And I'm sure there's enough stores and places in town where you'd be able to find the equipment if you needed it. Nice. So while you kind of – so, Sven, Trent seems to um, have you in a little bit higher regard, right? He, he's uh, he, he's kind of impressed with what you told him about the airport. He, he'd kind of written it off, but it now sounds like, it, you know, he looks at you almost like he's kind of sorry that he wrote it off, right? And he has kind of a newfound, like, a little bit of respect for you, right? So I guess um, – what is the rest of your conversation with Trent going to be like, or where are you going to take that with Trent? Um, well, I'm just looking to see what he accomplished today and what he's got plans for tomorrow. So he, he, he kind of smiles and he says, talk to a lot of people, right? And he said, uh, um, you know, he, he, he doesn't necessarily agree with what Mitchell's proposed. He, he thinks that right now um, his concern is the, you know, just because there's someone could get elected, it doesn't mean they're the right leader, right? So from his perspective, his experience as a sheriff, his experience as a judge, he really feels like unequivocally that he's the guy to be leading the community at the moment, right? And it, it, you're not getting a sense of megalomania from him, right? Or, or the, you know, he's kind of like, like power crazy. You're getting a sense of like genuine, uh, authentic, um, sincere belief that he really is the right guy to, to be leading the, the what's left of the town at this point. So he tells you that he spoke to a lot of people. Uh, he hasn't made any promises to anyone, but like he points to a few of the guys behind him. So he points to this guy, Jerome and this guy, Israel and says, Hey, they, they've already uh, agreed to be uh, like, like for me to deputize them. And we're going to make sure that there's a security perimeter. We're going to make sure that there's like some safety in this town because that little girl getting snatched, next time we may not have, and he kind of looks at you and says, like, heroes like you to get her back for us, right? So it seems like he's already starting to, like I said earlier, consolidate powers a little bit to, to a stronger term, but it seems like he's making promises to some of these people about them taking positions of authority inside the town. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that that's necessary, and I am basically get across that security is going to be security, and, I mean, it's going to be... It's going to be up to us to make sure we have, uh, I, I guess, really what it'll come down to is trying to figure out, um, for like a better word, like a rules of engagement. I, I think the biggest security is always going to be necessary and then figuring out um, doing patrols and keeping the place safe. I think the biggest things that are going to need to be discussed are going to be, especially with what happened the day before, um, what are we, what kind of protocols are we setting up with new people coming in? Um, what kind of protocols are we putting in for rules of engagement when it comes to people that are less than nice and then how that's going to be treated um, if they're getting hostile? I mean, it, nobody, I mean, before this, no one thinks twice about bashing someone over the head, but I mean, sometimes something's got to happen. So he gives you, without, you know, getting into, uh, um, like, the, you know, territory of the corny, he, he gives you a little bit of a speech, right? And so it's loud enough for anyone that's around to, to hear what he says. But he talks about how, you know, um, he, he, he was <clears> – <throat> He was he was a judge and a, a policeman for, or a sheriff for long enough that he has no doubt that there's going to be people that are willing to bash other people over the head and take what they want. And he says that from his perspective, everything you just asked him, like they're all really solid questions. And, you know, as far as he's concerned, there will be some kind of perimeter set up, some kind of patrol set up. The, it won't be a, a, a closed community, but they're not going to let, you know, after what happened to that girl the other night, he has no intention of letting strangers in and allowing people the opportunity to do that again. So, for, again, from his side, like, you know, security is going to come first, right? Like one of the first things he's going to do is figure out <clears throat> who's willing and able to fight and organize a loose militia, right? Enough people that if, you know, he says, look at the shit show the other day when that little girl got taken, like no one knew what to do and everyone's kind of barking orders. He said, we're going to put a framework in place and we're going to try and make sure that we provide the town with some security. 
So as you're listening to him again, it doesn't sound like it's some megalomaniac's plan. It actually sounds like um, it, it sounds fairly well thought out, but also on the more extreme side of things, right? I mean, he's suggesting that there's always going to be people moving around the perimeter, making sure that they're safe. No, and that makes sense. I mean, at this point, it's not like the social compact's been broken. It's just, it's just that it's certainly shifted. It's just how are we all? It's really who's going to agree on what line gets drawn where on which part of the social contract is where where that line has shifted because it, it certainly is not the same anymore. You know, he he, he kind of nods and he, he doesn't disagree with you, right? And there's like a little bit of chatter from other people that are in the area with you. But there's that that's that's not really in you know no, nobody's arguing about that. I think that again, like going back to what you know Maria was typing in, yeah, she will to his face. What Maria's typing into the chat, I, I think that that's you know the the other side of the the argument here, right? The the his secure could be somebody else's um, megalomania. Do you know what I mean? Or somebody else is kind of trapped. So it, it's it, it, he's, he's going to be a fairly polarizing character if he wins this, right? It doesn't mean you won't all be better off for it or safer, but he's not going to be necessarily, it doesn't strike you that he's going to be a benevolent ruler. It's it, it feels like it's going to be his way or the highway, even though his way might not be all that terrible. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, I'm not ready to for someone to lose a hand for stealing, but no, I get you. <laughs> And for stealing, I like that. Um, and there's a reason why they do it with the different hands. But no, I, I, I agree. It could be well on that side. So wh while Sven's having that conversation, I mean, <clears throat> Mitchell kind of goes up to Maria to teach him. He can see Maria giving Trent the side eye. I'm not sure if Lance is in this conversation hmm. as well. But he, he, he's, uh, he, he asks you, you know, if you've given any more thought, uh, uh, you know, what he asked last night, if you'd help perhaps uh, canvas some people. He said that, he spent most of his day going and knocking on doors. He said, but, you know, he, he doesn't feel that he looks over uh, Trent and some of his group and he's like, I don't think I can cover the same amount of ground that they're covering. So, he, you know, he has uh, gone out and, you know, talked to a bunch of different people, but he feels like he's getting outnumbered or outweighed. So, um, Maria Teach, I, 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 you know, what kind of – and Sven, I don't know if you're still talking to, Sven, uh, to Trent and Lance, whatever you're doing, but how are you reacting to Mitchell while this is going on? I'll just say under my breath, I said, you're going to need a lot more than canvassing for what's going to be coming. Because I've already, I'm already biased against this guy. I just got a hunch it could be wrong, but I'm not liking what's going on. I said, you might need to make different plans. And then that's all I'm going to say, because I'm, cause I'm angry. <laughs> Teach, what, how are you reacting to him? To, to Mitchell? Yeah. Um, I mean, in general, I prefer him to um, the authoritarian. But is, is there something I would suggest we put something in place so that things don't get out of hand later? Is there anything? Where's all the water kept? Where's all our water kept? Um. So... So this, like, the, whatever's left in the um, in the kind of the, the town's water tanks is running dry, right? So you're kind of like, uh, this, you know, you're drinking bottled water where you've been able to get it. Um, you're, you're conserving water in the town, and there's like a you know a, a reservoir close by this type, but but you know none of the facilities are working at the moment. It's not like the water purification tanks, and there are some of those on the island. But it's not like those are working correctly at the moment, right? So that, that's kind of a good point there. The, the water is going to be running very dry very soon. I will go back to the library and uh, given nobody else cares about the place, uh, I'll hide all the... I hide all the details on the water supply and anything about purifying water. Are you going to keep the books in there? Or are you going to take them out and put them somewhere? Uh, I will hide them somewhere. Probably in the... site, but not not far away. Okay. So you 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 arguably want to do that um, 
like after dark or whatever, right? This isn't something you'd want to do in like, you know, but you do but have if a they're, if, they're ca- if they're canvassing, I'm I'm assuming they're doing other things that are keeping them busy, yeah? Yeah, for I sure, want, for sure, for sure. I right? want them and, not and again, seeing them. Okay. So let's, so uh, this would probably and, and be tomorrow the, that you're going to do it. jacket like, on, them, the, on the outside so people don't know what they are. Yeah, Say that I mean, again, I'll, Zero. I'll, I'll, you can... You can keep book jackets of like books nobody wants to read on the outside of the books. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. And I, I'll deliver a few books every once in a while to people that are doing stuff, and then like a democracy book to uh, Mitchell. And Here's a book for you and for you and a yeah. book for you. Exactly. Um, you win a book, and you win a book, and you win yeah, books exactly. for everyone. Uh, but that'll that'll mask me just whittling away a few key books for things and the prepping books. Um, thinking what else you might want to steal. Uh, I just want to put in place a catch all that if things go a bit wayward, we have some bargaining power. So there's there's enough empty houses, Teach, where you could put the books. Yes, we can, Mia. Someone's going to have to catch it. But there'd be enough places where you'd be able to hide those books. But, again, we're going to have to make a, a check for you doing that to make sure that you don't just have some bad luck and stumble into someone at night while you're moving books around in a wheelbarrow looking super <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> what you got in the wheelbarrow? Oh, nothing. Those better not yeah, be nothing. books. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. There's porn. I don't know. It's not porn. No, it's it's no. <laughs> it's books on flower it's arranging. Cooking math. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it at night because I'd look suspicious wandering around with books. I'd just um, take books Swart to people the during the day, but um, slowly be whittling the supply of e-books away. Yeah, you could do that over the course of the next. I mean, the, we have a, a a line in the sand of like, or you know, timeline coming up of this election, right? And so I think that um, you, you'd be able to spend uh, a little part of every day just taking books backwards and forwards without anybody noticing you, right? So, where, where where are you? Are you putting them in your house or are you putting them somewhere else? No, nah, I wouldn't be putting them in my house. Um... If if at some point during the day or the next couple of days I have a conversation with Teach, I would mention that I've got some stuff planted around my own property, um, you know, like a bug out container or stash that we could potentially set something up in my place. Has anyone else got I, him I, being really weird noise? Oh, it was <laughs> fucking awesome, think, wasn't it? Yeah. My my phone. My so phone on drugs. Yeah. Oh mate, that was awesome. <laughs> that was like the most AI that I've ever heard. John, who who is, if you guys don't realize it, he is artificial intelligence, right? I so <laughs> that was the most true to his source being I've ever heard. The the the, the up and down. That was brilliant. He's, he's your ex-wife. <laughs> Again. <laughs> um, I remember that. Yeah, no, horrible. All right. So all right. So Matt, I'm I'm just gonna pick a house. Um if and I won't put them all in one place either. You're just going to spread them around? Yeah, so that even if they do find one stash, they're not going to find everything. All right, perfect, perfect. I'll just make that change on the... Uh... All right, so uh, and what, what books have you taken out of there? Is it just like books of general use? Uh, water, especially anything that I can think of, for uh, water purification and uh, tank planning for the water and... Uh, plumbing, uh, anything to do with water, which will prepping everything <laughs> like that. Because eventually we're going to need. Yep. Oh, sorry, you, you were good to finish. Sorry. I, I I'm done. Okay. Well, since um Maria has uh, acumen, can she use that for yeah. survival? And if she can survive, wouldn't she know how to um make fresh water or at least make water cleaner? And she can help with that skill, you know, like charcoal and stuff. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you know, so I, I, I you're right. I mean, survival um, would allow you to know that stuff, right? I think there's a difference between knowing enough to get you by indefinitely, kind of like out in the wilderness, versus getting the water for purification systems working again, right? And we or can like give you the, the books on it too, so you can study it and, yeah. and then be the expert on it. 
Bingo. So I think her skills would absolutely play into that right now. I think that this would be, frankly, kind of like a, a toss-up, not a toss-up, but like a joint, a joint effort between you and Teach. Yeah, it, I mean, if he wants to share, but if he doesn't, I mean, I, I think I still have skills for that, right? So, so again, for you, yes, right? So I think the, the skills for you being able to, uh, as you say, use charcoal or, or, or whatever to purify water for yourself, Definitely, right? But like to get it, like I think what teachers stealing is or, or, or relocated level. Yeah. Bingo. Oh, okay. right? How would you get that equipment working, right? Like the dummy's guide to water purification for a town level. You know what I mean? Rather than just that, like, hey, right, you could take care of yourself and those around you with those skills. He's trying to make sure the whole town would still have a water supply. Okay. Yeah. You can drink your own pee, but the whole town can't drink their pee. <laughs> hey, I'm very willing to share. Like just just saying, like if that if that comes up, like I mean, we can drink our own, but if we can drink each other's, you know, that might make it make <laughs> us all cool cool. together. If you give me your bottle of water, I'll drink that and I'll pee in it and give it back. There you go. How's that? <laughs> I can do it, mean, man. <laughs> just just run that through the charcoal. Yeah. Hey, that's not the worst deal I've ever had, right? You're making the sound like there's something super weird with all of that. I, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Dollar Tree. So, <clears throat> I keep forgetting which streaming to. to <laughs> there's, uh, uh, people, like, there's people you know, on this. I don't even know who they are. They, so like they've it, heard, they've heard worse. I'm sure they have. I'm sure. I'm sure they have. <laughs> um, all right. So all right. So back to back to kind of the evening before, and maybe we're done, right? Maybe we're done with this kind of like you know hanging around the fireplace. Mitchell's still seeing if you guys will uh, help him. Sven's had a fairly long conversation with Trent. Um, is there anything else you guys would want to do before we switch over to the next day when teachers kind of sign to, to hide the books? Uh, I mean, is Trent just doing canvassing or is he actually doing security work besides go for Jackson? <laughs> well, I don't know what he's really doing over there, John. But Does it really sound that bad? Oh, it's, it's yeah. hilariously bad, yeah. I mean, I think you heard us all starting to laugh at the same time, right? I mean, that's Sorry. pretty rare. Oh, yeah, we all no, laughed at it. It sounded cool. <laughs> it sounded freaking great. Again, I, I'm not saying I prefer this, but I do like this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you with that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Please leave a message after the tone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So, so next morning. So are, again, go, I just sorry, have a on. weird question. Are are Rachel Aria, Arialano and Janice Arialana related? Yeah. So Janice is the girl that got kidnapped that you rescued from the bridge, and Rachel's her mother. And are they related? Yes, mother and daughter. <laughs> yeah. Daughter. So this is Janice okay. is like, Rachel's her mother. Yeah. So they're related. The mother and daughter. They got that kind of the O well, and the A thing going on at the end of their names. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh. yeah <laughs> womp, womp. Uh, thank you for finding that. Thank you for fixing that. Um, all right. It was pressing. It, it was pressing. All right. Hopefully that's fixed. Yeah, that's most fixed. important. Yeah. Okay. So they really are. They really are. Lanos. They really are. They really are related now. So they're obviously some kind of like, evidently some kind of uh, like mimicry going on there, or some kind of big deception. But now this is real. They really are mother and daughter. I promise you. All right. So tomorrow, what what are you guys? Um, what what is your plan for the next day? Um, Lance is going to be studying. So I guess uh, Maria, Sven, Teach, what do you plan on doing? Are you going to be helping with any of the canvassing events or, or activities? Are you going to be minding your own business? Are you going to be doing uh, um, uh, like like looking after your own food supply? Uh, I'll be real simple. I'm going to go fishing, but before I do, I'm going to stop to teach and uh, see if he can get me a book on fuel so that I can hmm. check out um, – you know, the conversion that we had talked about, making it useful among different machines. And then um, 
I'm going to check the coastline to see if there's any other kind of fuel trucks or anything along the way. I know we talked about one at the airport, but just in case, as I'm canvassing around the edge of the island, I'll be reading that while I'm fishing. Okay. And I'm beautiful. Going, so, I, I guess I'm going to ask them, <clears throat> my three I'm main homies there, how they feel about Trent and just kind of feel them out and see who I'm going to start trying to make alliances with. So you said that's of like like generally people in the town or in the village, is that right? Uh, well, I'm gonna ask uh, Lance and um, Teach since they're since I've been hanging around them more how they feel yeah. about Trent and uh, if I like what I hear, then I'm gonna try and be more involved in their business and um, keep an eye on what's going on around because I am not liking Trent at all. <laughs> I don't mind I like Trent as a. I don't mind Trent as a uh, on guard guy, but I don't necessarily want to follow him. Have him running everything. Yeah, Does that makes sense. So, I'm not really voicing my opinion. I just voiced it one time to to uh, Mister Democracy there because I slipped. <laughs> I lost my cool, but um, so I'm just trying to. All right, I, I guess I'll just start hanging out with with the. With, with the boys then <laughs> and so if you, if you need any help with anything just uh just let me know oh wait what about you lance uh you know i don't i don't really know yet the way i feel is like if it gets ugly I might just split <laughs> all right uh, if you need anything just let me know <laughs> All I have is a garden over there, so. <laughs> so just if we are splitting there, we go north, east, not south, west. Where did Zero go? Uh, He's hiding. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Don't pay attention to anyone behind the black curtain. <laughs> Get muted, yeah. Man, grabs the. Uh oh. We, we really need break. to get you a. No, he's still doing stuff. It's the battery on my phone. That's all it is. Yeah. It's changed over to the map. So we can't see him or hear him. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, you. there you are. <laughs> you. Oh, no, no, no. I've been here, right? No, no. I thought you were talking to John about his like speed up and down. I, I, I've been listening to this conversation going on with Mina, kind of like, you know, sharing her discomfort. I didn't know if you guys were done with that that, that conversation. Yeah, I think we're has, done. <laughs> has your cover fallen in front of the camera? Um, yeah, oh, so we're, yes, we're done, yes, I think. Yeah. There we go. Thank you, man. You this is what happens when I shake my desk too much and the cover comes down on it. So thank you for that. <clears throat> so, all right. Um, so in that case, so John, um, let me bring up the other map. Oh, actually, no. Uh, so kind of ping on where you'll be going the next day, kind of your route. You said you were looking to see if there were any other fuel tanks or anything, right? Or fuel trucks. Ping, ping on the map as to where you'd be going. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably scope that up this way. Yeah, there's there's really nothing up there, right? And and um, the let me share my screen again. So it gets a little bit kind of uh, ugly, like um, map wise, right? I mean, the the there's lots of shallows and kind of shitty area up here, right? So this this area you didn't really find anything, right? This is kind of where you were pinging. There's no food trucks or anything up here for you. Or anything for you to be able to get to, and again, the you know the further out you get over here, the more you're gonna do, like hit into some very dodgy uh, territory. Unless you go over and follow some of these shipping lanes, kind of heading up here, that aren't gonna be caught up in the shallows. That makes sense. Yeah, but there there was nothing there, right? So going back to the roll twenty map, so th this area, this area, you, you didn't really find anything of any value or any worth. Okay. Where are you going to head after this? Are you, you, are you done for the day or are you going to head to a different area and see if you can find anything? No, at this point, until we go get the fuel from the airport, I'm probably not burning too much fuel, just doing regular fishing. Yeah. 
Yeah, fair enough. your uh, secret fishing spot? Well, I can tell you, can I? Oh. Wait, I think, um, I think right in there. So secret, I don't even know where it is. <laughs> do you do you need company or anything, or are you good all by yourself? I mean, if you guys came out with me, I mean, either or. I mean, you guys were having the conversation about Trent. I I wasn't. I didn't think I was a part of it. I think I'd already set out, but uh, uh, you can come whenever you want. What happened? I'm an early riser, get to work kind of guy. Hi. Well, if you're, so I don't know if you are retconning it to, so that John was there or Sven was there during that conversation. But if you're not, let's have you make uh, a fishing check and plus one again because you're in the Jenny. Um, and it would be a group check with Mina if she's out on the, the boat with you. All right, beautiful. So I think that I'm just going to make a, a homebrew rule that if you're in the boat, normally you get um, two units of fish or two units of ration for every day that you're doing this. I think if you're in the boat, it's going to be 4x that, right? Because you're going to use a net and you're going to be kind of like pulling them in. So even though it's it's not like a fully set, you couldn't go hunting shark in this thing, right? And like with a small crew, you could easily bring in like 4x the normal amount. That work? Sounds good. All right. So, all right, beautiful. Um, sorry, I'm just making notes here so I can update the rules after. All right, beautiful. So, Sven, um, you and Maria are out. Um, you, you seem to be a believer in Trent last night. Are you and Maria discussing him or any of that, um, you know, anything to do with Trent at the moment or during your day? Uh, if she if she brings it up, we'll have a conversation. You seem, I don't know. Me, it's up to you. But you seem like you seem like you'd bring it up to me. <laughs> I would. <laughs> All right, Spin. What do you think about Trent? So, it, similar. Just to keep it simple. To, to reiterate what Teach said, um, I don't have a problem with him in general, and, and even as a, given what had happened that first day. Uh, I don't see a problem entirely with him being a leader, but again, I'd be on heightened alert depending on how he treats his uh, uh, leadership. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. You you reached out to me and, and took me in, so you're probably the only person I'm going to be honest with. I don't like this. I've seen this before. I don't trust him. It starts out good, but I don't like this. Where'd you see it before? My background. I, I was in the military, and before that, life on the streets. I've seen this before. And that's all I'm going to say. Hmm. Uh, being the friendly person I am, I'm good enough to maybe push push a little bit back but easily know when to back off on the conversation I'll give you the look not to push back <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk more please <laughs> it was real hairy down and numb <laughs> Put the weather down here man I feel like Sven's really trying to avoid this conversation <laughs> and look, if, if you love Trent so much, why don't you just marry him? <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh my um, all right. So so you, you seem unmoved. Um so let's just kind of like fast forward over the next couple of days. So so how how are you gonna spend your time? Because again, like Lance is actually studying and learning. You have like really three days to figure out between now and the uh, the, the election, as is, right? Or, you know, the so-called election. Are you doing anything to help with that? Are you canvassing for anyone? Are you just minding your own business? Are you fishing? We won't go through every day. We'll go through the activities, but like we won't necessarily like role play out what you're doing. But 
generally teach what what are you doing for the next few days between now and the election i might actually help with the canvassing for mitch okay all right um maria span lance oh lance sorry you're studying uh maria span what, what what are you are you going out fishing every day what are you guys doing for the next few days Okay, you're minding your business and fishing. I mean, yeah, if okay. anybody comes aboard, I'll sit and chat with them or converse or camaraderie. Are we, are, we, hey, so are we in the same place at any point where we discuss that we might not like what's coming if it goes a bit square-shaped? Yeah, so, so every evening there's still like, you know, like there, there's kind of this regular gathering in the uh, in the park, right? So... You know, you guys have started to form a bit of a, a friendship, and you know the, the the butchering of those two shitheads on the end of the, uh, the 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 bridge that ties you together, right? There's a certain bonding <laughs> element in that. So um, yeah. blood will do that to you, right? So so yeah, I, I mean, again, like we're, we're just kind of like jumping forward. You'll be canvassing and helping, but walk me through your conversations in the evening or how that's going to unfold. I was going to suggest that if we think it might go a bit pear shaped, then we might want a cache of stuff in case we want to leave the place. Or because essentially, if if they come and take it by force, they'll take whatever we've got on us. So if we have a, another cache of stuff in another area, we can afford for them to take that stuff, go get our other cache, and make up whether we leave or reinforce what we want to happen in the future. I'm way ahead of you getting the cash ready. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've been doing that for a while now. What? Yeah, what you. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm shocked. <laughs> How soon do you think until I might have like a sample batch ready? Maybe a little taster. Uh, you, are you asking that of me? Yeah. It's it's still a couple of weeks out, right? You've still got another like four or five days of like just like getting to basics with it, and then it'll be like a week or so of trying to get everything set up. So you're still maybe two weeks out before getting before getting anything really accomplished. All right. I was hoping the fast action east yeast would uh would come through for me. <laughs> Again, you sound like my ex wife. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna ask. Okay. So, um, walk me through again, like the the. So, teach what 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 you know as you're as you're wandering around. Let's have you over the course of the next uh, couple of days. Let's have you make charm, inspiration, whatever kind of a check um, w would be appropriate for you. Kind of canvassing, intimidation. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, intimidate the shit out of them. Yeah, you will vote for me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have anything other than intimidation. Uh, <laughs> really? A teacher with no inspiration or anything? Oh dear! No. How about Marshall? <laughs> I, I will wrestle you till you agree with me. I will fucking throw on you until you agree. He doesn't have a uh, literature with him. He just carries a cudgel. Uh, man walks with big stick. <laughs> uh, fiddlesticks. Okay, not helping. <laughs> yeah. That... What else did you want? Just one, or do you want a couple? Well, you know, I, I, I um, if you can fill in the gaps for me about, like, you know, what, what did you learn that would change your approach? Then I, yeah, you can absolutely make another role. And you might even be able to convince me to give you a C mod, or you might want to use for a plus three beforehand. But like, what what did you learn that would make it any different the next day? I it, coming out the first time and not being able to do any support for him, I would go back maybe and uh, get back on marketing and uh, convincing people rather than um, rather than trying to do it off the cuff. Never tried to make anyone class president before. So, uh, look up a better way of doing it. 
Yeah, so uh, I, you're a smart cookie as a teacher, right? I mean, I think you can recognize like failings in your approach. So feel free to add uh, an inspiration dice for the plus three, but I think you'd also get a plus one C mod if you were that reflective about it and tried to figure out where you'd gone wrong. Uh, so what am I doing? Plus... Well, so if you want to spend a, an inspiration, like a, a distemper dice as was, right? You get a plus three. Yeah, like you yeah. can do that before the dice, but I'm saying you'd get a plus one C mod just by being so reflective. Barely, but there you done. go. Yeah. Hey, you've done it. So over the course of the next couple of days, you you convince uh, a, a, a. Let me just have a quick look. Um, roll. Roll two d six for me, <laughs> or th uh, four d six. I misread that as Pedo. Pedo. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you managed to bring um, roughly like 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 sixty people um, to the cause, right? Over the next couple of days, um, where you know there, there's as you kind of get into the swing of your 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 pattern, um, like you know every time you start seeing people or, or like you, you start in with a, a you know what what was what was. What would you rather go to? Would you rather go to back to a democracy, or would you rather just trust the one person has the right vision and all the answers for you? Right? Seems to be winning a lot of people over. That um, Tim is the movie. Oh, <laughs> sorry, this, it's John with his cultural disappointment stuff again. Sorry, I was getting distracted there. So, have you heard the good news about clean water? <laughs> Jesus loves clean water. Um, yeah, so you're able to rally a fair amount of people to the course teach over the next few days. Um, John and Maria, are you are you are you canvassing? Are you uh, fishing? What are you doing over the the next few days? I think you already said that you're already just going to be fishing, correct? Yeah, yeah but um, at the night, I'm curious, uh, knowing a lot of the town, uh, the kinds of people do I notice um, that that Trent's recruiting that have been showing up. Like what kind of people they are? The kind of people that seem to be power hungry. The kind of people that just are very amenable. A lot of yes men. You know, um, if you had to put them into a category, you'd, you'd probably describe them as the easily led, right? So it, 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 it's the people that you'd kind of expect to, right? It's it's you know, there's uh, and none of this is necessarily bad, right? But there's like you know. One of these guys, uh, this guy Jose Floyd, he's ex-military, right? He was he was in the army like thirty years ago, so he's kind of like not looking for a leader, but willing to fall into this. One of these other guys had been a policeman for a couple of years before he quit and went into a different field. So it, it, it's, <laughs> oh, I mean, it doesn't feel good about any of this. So so you know, you, you don't get a bad sense from them, but they're also not people that you know you would necessarily hang out with yourself. Okay. All right. So, anything want anyone want to do anything else before we kind of get to the day of the election? Nope. I'm already biased against Trent, so uh, I'm yeah. ready for I'm ready for fight or flight, just in case. So you have a bug out bag or two ready to go. Is that right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Um, for this election, are you just going to have them two giving a quick speech so that we can see what's going on? Yeah. Because I don't think I've interacted with Mitchell at all. So, so you have a couple of days. Would you want to, would you want to interact with him before you got to the election? I mean, at least like a quick overview of what they both want to do, but I mean, that could happen at election, honestly. Yeah. So, you know, Mitchell's very open with his ideas, right? He, he just, he, he thinks that, um, he seems to use the same phrase quite a lot, that none of us are smarter than all of us, right? <laughs> so he wants to believe that there are other people in the community that have probably got stuff to bring to this, right? And, the, the you know, just trusting that Trent has all the answers and that he'll promote all the right people. Mitchell just doesn't feel very good about that. So that's kind of what you've picked up in the last couple of days, right? And he's not making promises to anyone. He's just promising that he'll do the right thing for the town and he'll rely on people that are smart to make sure that the you know he, he, that everyone stays safe and the town starts to thrive and get healthy. That's kind of like a summary of of his views. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So um, 
All right, so it's 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 the it's the day of the election, right? So you uh, you get to um, you know uh, there you 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 haven't seen this many people here before, right? There there are you know previously you'd seen dozens of people here. Now you're seeing you know maybe maybe a hundred, right? Maybe maybe more than a hundred, right? There's like, but a lot of people where it feels kind of noticeable. You walk into the park and there's there's almost like you have a fight or flight reaction to it, right? Because it's like you know, crowds were not good before the pandemic. So it was an easy way to spread the dog flu. So it feels weird, but it also feels kind of nice, right? Just seeing all this humanity kind of gathered around, right? And I mean, I love your commentary in the background. I believe you've used Mitch, but you're soft, man. I would agree with that. So th there are there are possibly you know again like in the region of like tens of like tens of dozens or like you know hundreds of people potentially in this area even, even mark and tom are surprised right they, they've worked to set up little uh um kind of voting stations on each side of the fire pit right and they got like little desks set up and like pieces of paper and pencils for people <clears throat> but as you start mingling with them like you know old tom says to you hey like like this might take a lot longer than we thought there's so many people and we're gonna have to count the votes and have to count them a couple of times so you're all kind of impressed with the turnout um the the you know the candidates are milling around right and you know as, as you get there tom says hey we're gonna do this at sundown right and so um they, they're gonna give the candidates an opportunity for everyone to start talking uh oh who fell into the fire <laughs> oh, this old guy, like, he just got all distracted and suddenly ended up burning. Oh, God. Oh, God, the fire's now moving instead of the old guy. There we go. All right, so. <laughs> um, the fire the, slipped on the old guy. <laughs> oh, my God, the fire's moving in the line. All right, don't mess around with scenery while you're in the middle of a, a game. All right. Um, so they've got everything set up, right? And they also have an area, and Tom says, yeah, we're going to give the candidates an opportunity to, you know, over on the whatever this is over here, this dais over here. They're both going to have an opportunity to state their cases just before they go to the uh, uh, to the election, right? So um, they, they both stand up and they both give their little speeches, right? The... Um, <clears throat> the um trent is talking about how he can keep everyone safe and like it, you know he can bring order to it and then mitchell is talking to people about how um you know he, he wants to really restore a democracy and he'll lean on the people around him so uh the polls open and people people start voting do you guys uh anything you'd want to say or do before we get to the vote which way do we think Tom is, is Tom organizing the county? Yeah, Tom and Mark are doing it between them. They're fairly trusted in the town, right? Like people kind of they, they talk to them every day and they're two of the friendliest souls. So people and you know, this is Tom's event. So yeah, they're kind of running this election. Which way do we think he's voting? Who, Tom or Tom? What what do you mean? Well, both of them for that matter. Do we get an inclination over who they would vote for? And just making sure yeah. that they're not. Um, no, they they ringing. In the last couple, yeah, you know, they, they may do right, but but in the last couple of days, they've kind of, you know, Tom Tom's a little bit more fatalistic about things, right? Tom Tom's getting old, right? And he says, like, like I don't really care which of them wins. I'm just glad that somebody's stepping up, and he's, you know, that he feels too old, or like he's just too exhausted. He misses his wife too much. Like he doesn't want to have to run things, but he also thinks that like there's too many people living here. That you know, water's starting to go sour. Like there's no more fuel. Like okay, people are going to be able to fish, but in Tom's mind, like things things could go kind of ugly in Astoria if somebody's not prepared to take control, right? So he seems ambivalent towards it, right? Mark, on the other hand, like you know, Mark's made his is uh, is living by being a scavenger, right? And so you know, very very bluntly, he's kind of worried about like a little bit like Mina, right? He's a little bit worried about uh, Trent being an old old fashioned cop, right? That you know, is Mark going to have to give up? Like you know, Mark's very clear about, hey, I get on my bike and I scout around and I put myself at risk and. You know, if I get a punk dry, I have to walk back. And, like, this isn't easy. I, I don't want him telling me what I've got to do with the stuff that I scavenge. So he's leaning more towards Mitchell because Mark doesn't – it's not that he even really likes the idea of a democracy. He's just worried about a cop taking over and what that might do to his – basically his scavenging business. That help? Yep. 
Yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> okay. I might just keep a sort of watchful eye on the ballot when it goes. You mean sure. like, like honestly, like a ballot watcher, right? Like we have them over here, like a poll yeah. watcher, right? Making sure that there's all right, all right, perfect. All right, so maybe I'll suggest uh, Sven does that if he's in higher regard with me as well. Yeah, yeah there's going to be. That, by the way, they're going to do this out in the open, right? So the 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 plan is like Tom tells you, right? The the people, it's all out in the open at the moment. There's a table. Someone walks up, writes their their vote, puts it into the box, and walks away. Next person walks up and does the same thing. At the end of this, they're just going to crack the box open and put all the slips on the table and just count them. So you'll be able to stand over. But there's really very limited opportunity for them to fuck with the votes. Random wind gust. Yeah, they've got some big rocks. Mark has managed to get some of those little paper clips that people like, those little alligator clips, right? So they'll be able to bind them all together and they won't blow away. All right, so which way are you four going to be voting? Oh, Mitch for sure. Mitchell. Yeah, I gotta go. You gotta go, Mitch. Sven. Thought it was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, so uh, Sven, are you, you, do, do you have a preference? I think you're leaning yeah, towards Sven. Friend. Is that right? Are you leaning towards Trent? <laughs> what? Fucking knew yeah, it. Yeah, he's going I knew it. I, I fucking knew it. All right, so hold on one second. So let me roll for uh, Trent and then Mitchell. It's a roll off. Uh, 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 what's the name of this town again? I keep forgetting. Astoria. Oh, okay. Never end the Astoria. So, admittedly, this is only on a on a two d six, um, but there's only there's only so so it, it's not really reflected. But there's only there was only one point between the vote, right? So this was like a very close oh, run. Man. So as they're counting the ballots, it's like one for him, one for him, one for him. You know, it's like really really close. In so the story of fuck counts you. Um, thank you for this commentary is fucking gold. Um, so it it it. it so Tom and, and Mark, they count the votes. They then switch piles, right? And again, this is all out in the open, and they count the votes, and they tally them. They have a little conversation. And then Tom announces that Mitchell has won the vote, right? The, and it was really close. He says, like, it came down to, like, a handful of votes in the end, but they counted it twice, and everyone looked over their shoulders. Like, it's congratulations, Mitchell. So um, <clears throat> Mitchell, you know, it makes a little um, – acceptance speech and he's kind of um hey like i'm i'm you know thank you very much and he, he asked trent if trent will help the town and be the uh chief of security or whatever you'd want to call it like town sheriff right so you know trent looks a little bit like crestfallen because he really thought it had this in the bag but he perks up a little bit when mitchell asked him to take care of security so he, he feels that he has a place in the town and it doesn't look like this is going to, you know, certainly on the evening, like, he, you know, smiles and shakes hands and whatever. So it doesn't feel like there's any kind of weird <clears throat> animosity between them. And everyone kind of politely kind of like applauds Mitchell as the new town mayor. And that's when he backhands him. <laughs> like forces him to his knees and says, no, I've always won elections, bitch. No, he, he doesn't. Like, it all seems very, very above board. What you have, my well, good. It was drama free, at least it seemed. <laughs> well, so far, so so, so far. as Mitchell is just giving his his acceptance uh -oh. speech and saying like, "Hey, so like, uh, you know, Trent, I, did I just hear an uh oh from Zero there?" He says, um, I, "I appreciate Trent, and I appreciate he's he's offered, you know, like I, I'm asking him to be chief of security. He's agreed to it. Just as that happens, you realize again overhead, you can hear a plane noise." And that's where it goes dark, and that's the end of the session. All right, nice. God damn it. <laughs> you like, hey, mate, it's not all over. You can stage a coup. Uh, again, over the next week or so, just to kind of prep your – or in the next session, I should say. So every week of game time, there's meant to be a morale check. 
right? So th this is kind of what I, this why I arbitrarily set this up and like a leadership challenge and stuff, because I do want to test these rules, right? And, and again, probably more than you need to see. And for the last time this evening, I'll give you all a headache by showing you this. But there's actually, a, I, I have a little morale check uh, kind of thing over here, right? To see how, like, to see what C mods will be like. So I have a set of, like, a nascent set of rules around um, this kind of like how you would run the community and how you would do it. So next week, we'll be going back to there is kind of like an adventure plan for the next session. But there will also be this kind of, again, like, you know, the morale check. How's Mitchell doing? How's the town doing? How's the town like psychological health? What is Trent up to in the background? That will make sense. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, look, I, I, what, I, what, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, I'll put them again in chat, but the, the activities, right? Like I'd like you to look through them and think about, Hey, so we've played this through. And again, like the goal is not every day picking an activity and we role play that activity again, going back to the, uh, Oh, I will make you all dizzy one last time and share my screen. Um, you can do these, um, the community rules, it's possible to do them by the week as well, right? So instead of doing them all daily, so in Lance's case, he could say, hey, I'm just going to spend a week studying, right? Or you could spend a week fishing or whatever. So I, I, again, I would ask if there's, um, if there's any activities that you think should be covered, right? That should have a drop down, right? Because all of these have descriptions somewhere and there's kind of like rules about where if you do this, this like meaning that if you go scavenging, you get two units of supplies. If you go fishing and you're successful, you get like, you know, like obviously you get some fish. So if there's any activities you can think of from days or weeks that your characters would undertake as kind of a backdrop to the story, that, that would be much appreciated because again we have I have activities planned and I have an ongoing story but there will be this backdrop of these activities so any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. You have like uh, repairing vehicles or rebuilding engines or like building houses or like small small houses or like makeshift shacks or. Uh, you know I do let me let me put them again in uh, Monday night games crew chat. It, it's so it's the list is. Uh, decompressing, right, which is meaning if you're trying to get rid of a breaking point, right, if you've been, like, getting too stressed out and your character's too close to the edge, you can take a day off and just go and do something and relax and drop a point. Farming, fishing, foraging, hunting, maintenance, which would cover what you're talking about. And every week, the, the building you live in or vehicle you live in or your boat spend will have to do a maintenance check to make sure to see if you need any supplies for it, if there's anything that's broken with it. Recruiting recuperating so if you've been injured you recuperate scavenging studying training and trapping right and studying and training would be obviously studying as for yourself but you can recruit an apprentice so if you wanted to train the the apprentice you'd do it that way that would be the difference that makes sense Sarah? yeah i think that covers pretty much everything i think the only thing that stands out to me would probably be building yeah if you Would want to say, like, like when we were at the mall and we wanted to build that watchtower. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't it wouldn't be under you're right. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be anything else. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be maintenance and it would it wouldn't be scavenging. Like you say, it would be it would be the actively building something. So like, I think that is different. So construction maybe. Oh yeah, construction. construction might be better. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Thank you for that. Because if you're going to make, like, say, an expansion on something, I would still call it construction. Or, but I mean, either yeah. way, however you want to call it. Yeah, I, you're, I, not, I, you're not fixing, you're adding. Yeah, so for some of these, like, um, maintenance or scavenging, mostly maintenance I would think of, for something that's essentially new or something you have a lot of skill in, is there going to be, like, um, added negative bonuses over time just to kind of encourage something to break to? encourage like an encounter to go out and go do something yeah or are these going to be even rolls every week no let, let, let me show you so that um uh, and that a great question thank you so there is um there are rules for oh hold on let me share my screen again because like the farming why. the farming and like the, the the animal herding and all that that makes sense that it would be the same it's just like a random oh no one of the cows tripped and broke a leg or something but if you go out foraging, I mean, you're only going to find so much out in the wild or scavenging. I mean, eventually you're going to dry up everything you're scavenging. 
Yeah, yes and no, right? So I think the the sca- mm-hmm. so the scavenging part, I mean, the idea is that you just uh, keep going like further and further out, right? I mean, you've got the kind of the whole world right. going and that's it, right? And to the point you were making, um, I do have some rules on this somewhere, but to the point that you were making, you'd um, uh, it would all become entwined, right? So if you went out scavenging outside of your area, at that point, you'd arguably run into people, right? At least the rules I was looking for. So right. you'd arguably run into people, right? And then kind of also going to your point, yeah, like for maintenance and everything else, there's there are item there are, there are upkeep checks, right? So everything starts in pristine, assuming that it's like you've got it out of a box, right? And then it goes through. So, you know, regular use of something like sleeping in a tent or target practice, it wouldn't cause any degradation. However, an extended firefight or having to pull the tent up and run in the middle of the night without taking care, you'd have to make a condition or an upkeep check, right? And if that doesn't work, it then drops the level. So, you know, it goes from being pristine to being used very quickly, then to warn, then being damaged, and then it becomes broken and you have to try and get it back. So that is there, right? And every item... Um, and also, uh, I, I think I have it in the core rules as well, like the older core rules about like for the, in fact, I know I do. I, I'm making it sound like I think I do, but there's rules in there for fixing structures. And and again, I've got to rewrite all this shit, right? But there's like bases and like how much supplies you'd have to put into them and like how much damage they're taking, what they would need. So some of the stuff you're talking about is already codified in the rules, right? I, I, again, I want to put a little bit more flesh around it because I haven't really thought about them too much. But going to your point, so every week we'd have to do, um, or every week you'd do a health check on your building or um, like an upkeep check on your building or your boat or whatever. And assuming you pass, there's no damage to it, right? But, uh, you know, and again, normal wear and tear arguably wouldn't do anything to it right but this would give an opportunity again to go out and scavenge to bring shit back and by the way scavenging is just a generic unit called supplies so it wouldn't be as granular as saying like the, I, I love when you guys said about the copper piping for the uh for the distillery or for the still but like if the, if you failed a maintenance check on your boat we wouldn't be googling engine parts right it would just be like hey go and find at the tractor place if you pass your scavenging check, you're looking for the pass that you'd need for your boat. So those supplies would kind of fall under that. Did, I, I know I said a lot there, but did that explain about the, the item condition of yeah, the other? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. All right. A- any other thoughts? Uh, just a side thing. Is Tom McKenzie and Jacob Gibson related? Um, are they in the town? Yeah. Tom McKenzie and Jake. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Probably from another mother. Angry old men. Well, no. Like, Jake, of course, he, Jacob <laughs> succumbed overnight to the uh, to, to the, the, the virus. So he's no longer around to impersonate Tom. But thank you for noticing that. I appreciate it. And Zero, you know, it's funny. It's why I've asked you a couple of times about your game and like, hey, is there an end? And like, what are you planning? Because like I, I feel like we've come to this like almost diametrically opposed. Like you, yours is like, hey, how long can these characters survive in this one setting, right? Like kind of like an alien movie. My goal with this is to create like more of a community where you could end up playing a lot of these different characters that you see on screen at the moment for different adventures or for different whatever, whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah. So different from the way we've come at it. But anyway. Well, I, I appreciate it. I know, I, I know it's kind of late with some of you. I, I really, really appreciate it again, as always. If you have any thoughts on what didn't work um, or if there's anything, any feedback you've got about anything, I'd love to hear about it. Not necessarily now, but like later this week or whatever. If you've got any thoughts, that would be awesome. All right, beautiful. Well, thank you all for playing. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very, very much. And to anyone that was streaming, I think there's still a couple of people on the stream even. Um, thank you all for tuning in. If you managed to make it through us, like you're freaking heroes. We really appreciate it. Thank you all. And I shall yeah, speak to you again. Sweet. Okay. Have a- okay. Good night.